Hello, ladies and gentlemen, so welcome. There was. Oh. Okay. <laughs> Not a good okay. girl. Yes, yes. Okay. Hello, <laughs> ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to our stream. Um, Division 5 tonight, Elite AI versus Plan B. You might have recognized the voice of my co host already. It's Shadow Moon. World famous Shadow Moon. Only for you people. You should be so happy I'm here for you today. Yeah, super happy. As usual, very excited. Um, so, yeah. We are setting up the lobby for now. So, uh, yep, we're us waiting for, for people to come. I'm gonna. A second. So, we got. Uh, this is kind of awkward to do while talking as well. Um, Again, our pictures are live as well. Um, so, mm. let's see. Oh, people are coming in. Uh, um, set up the 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 thingies in the lobby for the um, lobby draft mode and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. So, today we have Elite AI versus Plan B. Um, <laughs> that, yeah, sorry, if, if you had any, uh, if you had any, uh, uh, if you had any doubt, uh, based on the logo, I would say yes, plan B is what you think it is. <laughs> mm -hmm. So that it needs to be on the right side. So chance is okay. Back in here. Uh, yeah, okay. yeah, let's check if we have people on the right team. So, uh, I honestly don't really know anything about these teams. I have not uh, casted them before. Uh, but so far, from what I can see, we have Terror on one side and Mr. Nice Guy on the other side. So that's... Uh, uh -huh. That's gonna be a matchup we um, we are looking. Uh, Dorzo is on the wrong team, and Terror and Bergen are also on the wrong team. Uh, so swap swap this. Bergen was on the wrong team. Well, Terror and Mister Nice Guy are on the same team. That's totally not interesting. Then I don't know who to cheer. Filthy Hobbits, yes, exactly. <laughs> um, so yeah, this sounds okay then. That's... So, do we actually have any people in the chat other than um, Point Farmers? Oh, Thomas is actually here, and uh, and that was here, but I'm betting he's just Point Farming. So. Oh, Ray is also, yeah, yeah Ray, Ray is also here. I saw him change the title on your screen, actually, because I don't see it on mine. I was too late. Oh, oh he's actually Ray even saying something. Seems good. Um, so, yeah, let's go to the lobby. Um, we are waiting Ooh. for one person. Okay. Right uh, now, seems like in the lobby. Um, we can tell you, so, like, Plan B did choose to move Spider Queen here. Um... Braxis and Infernal Shrines were banned. Um, Braxis was banned by Elite AI. Um, so, that's a lot of popular maps already. Yeah, yeah that's actually true. That's uh, quite a few popular maps gone. So, if this actually goes to Series 3, we might get to see some uh, le less popular maps, like uh, like Warhead Junction or, or even Sky Temple. I would totally not be against that. Mm-hmm. Maybe if we can get really feisty, even the Towers of Doom. <laughs> yep, some Towers wouldn't be too bad. Uh -huh. um, so, let's talk a bit about the team. So, um, Elite AI so far is undefeated. They're uh, five in, out of five games uh, they have oh, won. That's pretty impressive. Um, um, Plan B... Uh, has done pretty well for themselves as well. Um, four out of five games won so far. Um, so they'll be trying to be the ones to take down Elite AI. 
Um, uh, this is Division 4, if I'm not mistaken, this right? This is Division 5. Very oh, Division 5. Division 5. Uh, but top of the Division 5, yeah, and uh, especially with the new playoff system, yeah. um, this is actually a very important game, I would say, then for Plan B, because if they can manage to secure a win, um, they're drastically improving their playoff chances compared to, to losing the game. So definitely um, definitely should be good series here. Yeah. Same same situation for Elite AI. I think if they actually manage to win here, they they have almost secured their um, victory or like their um, spot at the playoffs. Um, or at, at least it gets very hard for them to actually lose though. But. Yep. Uh, how many spots do we have for Division 5? I, I haven't actually read the um, document. I don't know at the top of my head, but I think it's... Um, so for Division 3 through 5, it's... Um, Division 3 gets 6 spots, two, uh, 4 also gets 6 spots, and 5 gets 5 spots. Okay, well, that's pretty decent chances of them going through. But then if they, if they manage to win here, mm -hmm. uh, for both teams, essentially. Um, I know... I know in theory who 277-691-80649 is, because I know there's there's one person, I can, and I always forget who that is. So it, it, it's definitely someone I know. I just can't remember now who that is. Hmm. Yes, it's yeah, it's... it's uh, I think it might be... Oh, yeah, it's one of the... It's Matty or someone, yeah. One of the... Um, one of the people from her favorite Norwegian team, I'm guessing. Might, might be wrong. Uh, do you uh, recognize five spots, in... yeah. Patrick, Patrick does, does tell us it's actually five spots. Yeah, seems good. Uh, so my information was correct. Um, so, this is already going a bit into overtime right now. Yes, this is going. Um... Um, it's up to the enemy team to decide how, like, how they want to manage this. Um, because because we don't really have any any enforcing rules when it comes to. Uh, yeah, we are. Um, we are getting report. He's restarted his internet. Um, the other team technically can choose after 10 minutes mm -hmm. to um, take, take the map team. win, yeah. map uh, win. Or give, give the additional team another fixed amount of minutes, essentially. So mm -hmm. we'll wait to see what their decision is. Although we did make the lobby a minute or two uh, late. Um, I mean, by the time they entered the lobby and stuff, we made it actually in time. But yeah, we... In a minute or two, we will inform them um, about that situation. But for now, it's all good. I'm sure he will be able to restart his internet in time. Um, um, I will be disappearing then for a moment until we start. Yeah. Uh, or um, sorry, guys. Okay. So, yeah. Now it's just you and me chat, waiting till this guy uh, till this thing starts. Um, let's give a little bit of information about the map. I'm sure everyone is pretty familiar with um, Tomb of the Spider Queen. So it's one of the smaller maps you have, um, in which Wave Clear plays a vital role. Um, not only when it comes to actual XP, but like the objective also. It's very centered around that. You need to get those gems from the waves and turn them in. Um, so yeah, usually we see a lot more focus on wave clear than we would see on some of the slightly bigger maps. Okay, we're getting news that he will be he will be here very soon. Um, so yeah, as expect some wave clear heroes. I'm pretty sure both of the, these teams. Um, have some familiar familiarity with with the map and know how to draft it um, it's not the start of the season anymore all teams kind of have adapted to some sort of um 
the vision meta like the meta between division 1 and 3 might be different but like within the division itself things kind of take a certain form I would say um, yeah so yeah global is also less popular because of the smaller map um, I don't know if teams have some special strats sometimes they do um, one of the things I I always got, I'm always gonna bring up whenever it's uh, two modes wider keen is um, the Asmodan strat, which kind of uh, carried me through season two of uh, Heroes Lounge when I myself was uh, was fresh into uh, into the group play. We just played Asmodan with Tapes for Blood. And uh, some other clear heroes like Johanna killed, killed us and just stack that quest into insanity and then just kind of threw globes at people until we won the game. Which was fun to do. Um, not the most um, not the most eventful um, first 15 minutes of those games though. As they tend to just be stacking. Enemy team wants to fight. Ah, nah. We just ignore them and we, we stack. Enemy team wants to turn in. Ah, nah. It's okay. We can survive those rap viewers. We just stack some more. Basically, that kind of stuff. So, looks like the last person is loading the game. And might be stuck on loading screen. So that's kind of awkward. Hopefully he'll be here very soon. So we can start our game, and I don't have to invent new uh, topics of conversation. And finally, looks like Maxi Monster will arrive into our lobby, so we can start any minute now. And Vision leaves the lobby. Okay, this is turning out to be interesting. Okay, Vision is back. No worries. This isn't all just a big debate to make me look awkward. Not that I need anyone for that now. Okay. Let's see. Yeah, both teams are ready. Terror is ready. Vision is ready. Mr. Nice Guys is ready. Okay. Then we will start our draft finally after about 15 minutes of delay hope you guys are still watching us um because this should turn out to be a pretty interesting match um i'm sure a lot of other division 5 teams who are looking to make the playoffs are interested in this matchup as well as it can have some impact on the standings there um so elite i gets the first ban and first pick, let's see what they go for. There's some different options. Took off, gets hovered here. Um, small note, Karosh in round 6 still isn't available. Or like, um, not allowed to pick yet. Um, not sure, but he might be in round 7. Uh, since it's going to be... Almost three weeks, I'm pretty sure. Cool, Dan gets banned though. Okay, we fi we, we just started our. Uh... I'm, I'm back finally. Sorry, guys. No, I'm no. trying to keep you sufficiently entertained. I, I was having some quick dinner and I was definitely entertained. I mean, if I, I'm gonna I'm gonna leave him more often and just listen to him. <laughs> if if I had to carry this stuff for five more minutes, I'm pretty sure I would have been naked in front of a cam by then. <laughs> um, well, then I have to go. Uh, <laughs> five minutes. 
Um, you, you have enough pictures of me already. No, that, that's true. That's true. <laughs> but I mean, it's it's never the same as with you. So, uh, uh, Gul'dan and Lenara are first bands. Uh, uh, both team denying some um, wave clear to the other person. Uh, Lenara and Ben is maybe interesting. She, she doesn't exactly what to say. Um, first band. So, it's it's usually two options here. It's um, it's either that they have scouted the other team actually, so no, they like to pick Lunar and have a decent player, or that they are planning to go for a very specific single support um, mm -hmm. comp with uh, Regor or Uther, who usually tend to struggle against those. Yeah. So do you see this to go being first picked? Um... I don't know if he's first pick worthy. I have seen him used to great effect, especially on this map, because with the web cleavers you can kind of deny a lot of TPS on them by just putting slow, uh, putting the silence under them. Um, so it's not a bad pick. I don't know if it's first pick worthy there. Um, Here's a tip we found out the other day. Um... Stuk of Silence actually works on um, Zappers, Zappers, on, uh, yeah. Zappers on Towers of Doom uh, and other maps. You can actually silence them, apparently, and they will continue to auto-attack and not use their explosion ability. So that's uh, that's kind of pretty useful. I, I honestly did not know that. Oh, Sylvanas per first pick and uh, KT. Um, very interesting. Yeah, Sylvanas, not very very popular on this map. I mean, she works decently well with the objective, with her being able to um, keep a lot of tower damage from this map either, but still. I mean, it's kind of a contested point with Sylvanas on this map. Uh, everyone agrees that the maps where you have like Punishers, Immortals, she's obviously super strong. On this map, obviously, you do get value, as you can uh, disable the towers uh, while the Immortal is pushing and get additional value. However, people are kind of on the fence, if, I mean, usually people aren't on the fence. People have very strong opinions, but one way or the other, um, how useful she actually is compared to what you essentially lose in the team fights. Uh, with both Sylvanas and KT, you have a lot of poke. Um, Sylvanas does have actually pretty decent DPS when the enemy is grouped up, and she has decent wave clear for this map as well. The thing is, Tukov is kind of anti poke. Uh, he perfectly heals that poke damage. So. Uh, I don't know if they will have the kill potential to actually finish people off, is what I am wondering. And then Stitch Azul on the other side, pretty, uh, I would say, more than standard picks. Yeah, Stitch is very nice with Stukov. The Zul can also do some nice route follow up on that. Um, brings them some decent wave clear. Um, and yeah, pretty solid so far, I would say. Yep, both teams pretty strong on, uh, on the wave clear right now. They definitely won't have any uh, trouble keeping up with um, the defenses and the attacks. Um, interestingly enough, um, Azul is very decent against Sylvanas because her trait doesn't work on uh, his minions. So she can't completely stop the push. Uh, especially it doesn't work on the web weavers as well. So if Azul is pushing into the Sylvanas, Sylvanas actually isn't the best on the defense, although with her spreading dagger she should still do mm -hmm. this amount of damage if she goes for the cooldown reduction or four. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, Leeming being banned sounds like a logical follow-up on the um, hook and silence root combo. I mean, um, does, it, does it? I'm not a fan of Ming on this map. It might be a target ban or simply they have struggled with Leeming in the past, but I mean, I would say the grey main is much better follow up for the hook than than Ming is. That might just be me. Ah uh, well, grey main is great follow up, of course, as well. Um, I don't know if they might consider picking. It. No, they already have two deep, so yeah, the grey main doesn't seem very likely good to get picked up by Plan B themselves. Um, the thing that Li Ming does have. Um, over the grey man though is the reset um, like like if your stitches like if you're getting a kill either way with the with the stitches hook I think Li Ming might be 
Morius. Yeah, I mean, uh, I mean, with the Zul uh, Bond, I mean, Stitch's hook, Zul Bond Prism, and um, I mean, even without the hook, Bond, Bond Prism and uh, Silence from Stuka are a pretty deadly combo. So a lim it it kind of make for limiting to burst one target down and then get to reset and continue on. So I mean, definitely not a bad uh, band by by any means. I mean, it's it's pretty deadly combination. Um, so yeah. So we see the Diablo on the other side, though. Mhm. Mm um. Yeah, a lot of here. I mean, Diablo is so strong like... in this map. That, that, that's completely undeniable. We we've seen time and time yeah. again some pro teams, uh, and we are having a disconnect. Yeah. Looks like. Uh. We will have some more delays today. I think it was Terra that left. Okay. So let's hope Terra gets back in here soon. Um, we should start the draft again with just like the same picks as we had so far. Yep. Um, so yeah, what we're talking about the... Um, what was the last thing we said before like things dropped? So, um, the Diablo, I mean, oh, it's, yeah. I, was, I was saying that it's undeniably strong on this map. We've seen time and time again um, several pro teams specialize in um, Diablo. It's not a very popular pick, but those teams that actually play him, um, have proven again, time and time again, that they are insanely strong on um, on Diablo, especially in this map. He can mm -hmm. really cause a lot of damage. Yeah, he, if you have any follow up for him, he can be quite devastating. The map has its fair number of walls and like smaller corridors as well. Absolutely. So there's a lot of things for Diablo to do. His wave clear isn't the worst actually. Um, he. I don't know how well he does on picking up the gems, um, but like if there's a minion left in the in your pack, you can always dash out to that and could just escape. Um, um, uh, again, I mean, he, his power, power spikes quite uh, heavily on 13 if you go for the um, additional HP on your stuns. Um, yeah, devastating charge. I mean, charge. Yeah, devastating charge. I mean, 15% uh, health, uh, especially if you can do it twice, is a lot for any hero. Uh, you don't even have to be a tank. I mean, that being thrown around, it it will get any hero to at least half health. Yeah, so that's it's, true. Uh, it's definitely a pretty good, pretty good choice. Yeah. Enables the Diablo to make some plays. Um... Yeah, we did see yeah there was then. there was recently that um, that um, sentence from Breeze um, that if you if you really want to learn how to play tanks, you should just one trick Diablo for a while. I actually did that um, earlier a few few seasons ago. Um, he really allows you to you know punish uh, enemy being out of position if they step up just a little bit, and you also have some peel tools. So he's definitely a good tank to. Um, to learn how to react with your tanks in time. Uh, it's actually the other team this time, so... Yeah. Um, research in the future. When we drop that. <laughs> so this is... Uh, we dropped out at exactly 10 minutes ago now, actually. Oh. No, no, no. It's no, 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 like, not then. It's uh, four, four minutes. I, I see uh, Ray's message in chat. Two minutes ago, three minutes. And uh, because of the delay, so that's four minutes total. Mm -hmm. So we, we have seven more minutes for them. But, I mean, the other team did allow 15 minutes of delay for the first time. So I guess it would not be fair. Uh, I mean, to... technically, both teams can choose how they um, react. With their 10 minute yep. time, pool, time pool? Yep, even the one team allowed, the other team can actually be a bit dickish and, and not allow that. So. <laughs> but, but then they get banned for unsportsmanlike behavior. <laughs> 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 um, 
I mean, number one rule of hero's knowledge is <clears throat> don't be a dick. So. Mm -hmm. Some of us might not always have the easiest time <laughs> at keeping that. Um, so yeah, we didn't see any ban on like the Uther or the Rhaegar, so... Um, yeah, both, both still open. I mean, uh, they sort of coincide with the Lunara um, ban, if they're going for something like that. And on um, the other hand, um, none of the teams have yet to choose their soul laners as well. Uh, both Sonya and the Haka and Leroy, who are arguably pretty strong on this map, are open. Yeah. Let's hope we, we don't see the dreaded Savannah solo lane. Um, which does tend to happen every now and then, how sad it is to see. Um, though. I mean, um, there are actually a few matchups that Savannah could in theory win. But, I mean, you're denying just such strong potential in the format that it's it's pretty laughable. I do remember a time when, <clears throat> for example, in BOE, it was considered pretty meta to have the Sylvanas split push while you when you won the Immortal, right? It was actually, like, pro teams actually did that. You would go with the Sylvanas in the other lane and consider it sort of, like, even, even um, cheese that you're like sort of giving up. I mean, you're, you're pushing both lanes, right? Because like Silvana says, that's awesome, undeniably strong solo push, right? <laughs> so they would they would push with Silvana solo because n n none of the solo laners could counter her, and then you would uh, you would push the mortal without it, which is like from today's perspective, uh, pretty laughable, and you would be considered like less than bronze if you try that. Um, but it was, I, I do remember pro games last summer, it was maybe a bit last spring, where it was considered, you know, pretty common. Okay, so Terrell has finally joined us, so let's ask if both teams are ready once more. Let's hope this time we will get there without any further delays, as we are already 30 minutes behind. Yep. Um, Th this match could have been actually over. <laughs> mm-hmm. So yeah, looks like both teams do yeah, of course. Oh. Okay. I'm just warning the teams and uh, we can start. Then and Anana should get banned here. Let's hope this all goes pretty fast now. Let's hope the teams do remember the draft as well. Um, yeah, yeah I, I don't prefer to remember. I do, I do probably. This took off sounds right. Yep. And then we had Stitches Zool, Bands on Liming and Diablo, and that's where we stopped. Let's Ming, and then we have the Dibbles. And then we can actually continue this game with only a 30 minute delay. <laughs> mm -hmm. Seems good. Seems good indeed. And let's see. Oh, we've been waiting so long for this. Yeah. Um, 
So Moth is actually one of the weirder targets to pick right now, unless you want to go into a double support, which I wouldn't do because it leaves your draft kind of weird. But like Moth doesn't have cleanse and doesn't have any burst heals, so that makes it makes it really awkward to follow actually follow up and save the guy on your team that gets sucked. I absolutely agree, especially with TTC not being the tankiest tank of all. Um, mm. Even he might get in trouble if he gets um, if he gets um, hooked and then uh, bone prisoned, you know, with the silence he can't get out, and uh, and and uh, without the cleanse or any burst skill to save him, especially he with might the, be in trouble. Especially with the availability of a creme now, like you mentioned earlier. Yeah. Uh, I mean, the the thing is, like, they bursted. Uh, they nerfed uh, ETC's um, default tankiness by removing a portion of his health, and he was given, as you all know, armor on his trait. Uh, but if With you're silenced, silence. you can yeah, you can't use that, and you can't use your uh, slide to get out. So if if he gets hooked into a silence, uh, it's pretty awkward for him to survive. But if they do go into the other support, that would mean Sylvanas would actually have to solely. So yeah, but she would be so she would be so lane against Asadar, so that actually wouldn't be the worst matchup for her. Mm -hmm. But still, I don't think she can actually push in against Asadar. Right? Asadar just yeah, she should be able to push in, but I mean, she should do fine in that lane. Mm -hmm. Although Asadar does have sustain, and Asadar will be stacking up his quest, whereas uh, Sylvanas won't actually be doing anything. So. It's true. Um, so now I was gonna say like maybe with the um, with the fact that um, Lydia... the other support can be Lily, who would actually win against Tassadar in lane and provide that cleanse, so and provide some uh, pretty needed deny of damage towards Vala. Oh, and we have the Varian. Is this uh, Arms or Fury Varian? You, you know what? Sure. Fury Varian wouldn't even be the worst. Uh, the other team doesn't actually have any um, any any stuns to deny the Varian. There's only um, there's only the hook, and that's a very short duration stun, uh, other than the Vala ult. And um, the Varian might be able to survive for a while. Mm, I, I, Let, just I mean, I, I wouldn't, I wouldn't pick it anyway. I would definitely go for the arms. Uh, I'm just saying it's, uh, it's definitely not, um, not as as bad as usual. So, I mean, we've seen quite a few fury variants uh, in our cast, mm -hmm. uh, even in D Division Five, Division Three so far. So it's not out of the question. It's possible. Um, I think Plan B kind of. Screwed himself over with not picking a real solo lane. Um, uh, like they, they did have the final pick here. So they could have. Uh, Max Monster was in Potatoes last season, if I'm not mistaken, right? Oh. Uh, so that, that's where I know him from. Seems good. I mean, going from winning uh, Heroes Lounge. To yeah. um, possibly only, only winning Division Five is kind of a down step, but mm -hmm. can't can't really do anything against that. Yeah. <laughs> Potatoes, of course, this season once again heavily favored to be the champ. Um, uh, didn't Potatoes disband this season actually? Uh, uh, did they disband this season? Or uh, well, well, I, I saw, or, or are they disbanding the next one? I saw uh, I, Cosmic I, is. I know the Cosmic is joining another team next season, but I. Aha, uh -huh, uh, they're, they're, maybe they're playing. I mean, it doesn't really ma matter if they play or not. They they will probably be crowned the champions anyway. So yeah, as long as Cosmic is still in there. It's, uh... Although we we also know that um, that the Ducks will be official champions next season. Yeah, spoilers. <laughs> spoilers indeed. <laughs> yeah, lay laying ducks is the team name, right? Um... I, I know the Ducks, so I don't really know uh, their full team name. Mm -hmm. Oh, Lucy actually informs us uh, they're still a team. Sorry. See, seems good. Uh, I, I wasn't. I didn't know if you were disbanding or not. I just, uh, I just know Cosmic is joining a different team. Mm -hmm. 
maybe he will be in two teams. It's not like um, I mean he can't. Um, pretty can't sure be. he'll allow it for himself. <laughs> <laughs> maybe, maybe we can recruit Kozlik in, in our teams as well, yeah. so that we can have like, and then we have like final playoffs four teams or Cosmic plays. <laughs> <laughs> Cosmic is the only winner. Cosmic, Cosmic wins, definitely, um, but like, so which team also uh, wins. Tyler isn't loading as far as I can see in the screen. Oh, let's actually um, make sure we don't have the draft overlay anymore. Oh, Tyler has cool lost that. his connection. Feels bad, man. Um, so yeah. <laughs> Kind of awkward. Um, they have to be the ones pausing there. Um, <laughs> okay, looks like pausing did happen. Um, so yeah, even more delays now. Um, internet must be pretty, um, pretty baby rage right now. Not allowing the teams to get connection to the game. Um, I hope it gets fixed after this last one. Because it would be really... Uh, would be really disappointing to see both these teams who have fought pretty hard so far to have to take a loss due to some minor internet issues. I mean, they can always. Uh, I just wrote this. They can always take a loss for the uh, for the map, and find a sub for the rest of the match. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, for now, there is the tank player. So, hmm. uh, just to be prepared, if there are any uh, Division Five tanks that would uh, potentially like to step in. In the chat, uh, please let us know. Yeah. So let's at least introduce our teams. Um, on the left hand side, we have Elite AI waiting with Gentle Solid on Zoo Vision, playing his Stuk of Bergen, on Tassadar Heilong, on Valla, and Maxi Monster playing the Stitches. And on the right hand side, we have Team Plan B with Dorzalon, Kelfas, Mr. Nice Guy, and Sylvanas, Ian, 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 O'Neill, uh, Chauncey on Varian, and Terror still AFK on the ETC. Is that supposed to be an L like lane on you? Yeah, I, I'm not. I'm not sure because I'm I'm half blind, but it's potentially L A L N O'Neill. Uh, that doesn't make sense, though. We will have to check. Um, <laughs> so, uh... At a certain point, you kind of run out of things to say. <laughs> um, have there been any talents picked so far? Okay, we can at least. Uh, we can unpause and check talents and then uh, flame those. <clears throat> let's, uh, let's take an in depth analysis of our talents. So we have the Zool with Backlash. Um, Pretty standard. I would say even after the nerf, it's still much stronger than the alternatives. I would say it does damage. So yeah, it does. It does a very decent amount of damage in the lower cooldown. The the dodge one would be nice if it didn't almost double uh, your cooldown. So it makes it you have to use it very carefully. Uh, it's almost an ult instead of a level one ability. Whereas uh, this level one has a standard cooldown. Mm -hmm. So I would say sure. Uh, growing infestation compared to 
I mean, with Stukov, there are still like a bunch of builds you can go oh. for. Who? Chiba. Wait, how did anyone unpause the game? Uh... <laughs> uh, yeah, so growing arm uh, is. Oh, we we have him back actually. Yeah, yeah. But, uh, growing guard is uh, decent on this map because of the very narrow corridors, right? So you can you can use it quite well. Tassadar, Vala, Stitches, pretty standard. Progrock, overpower. So that's probably actually a taunt variant. Uh, Mafian goes for the mana increase, probably for the oh, KT, and really? KT goes for convection. Oh, five Do stacks on KT for the yeah. first convection. That's no three stacks. Sorry, but still. Very effective, uh, going for the 5 now. Yeah. <laughs> um, so yeah, some uh, pretty decent early game <laughs> Pretty decent stacking, yeah. Actually, Darjol on SKT does know how to stack very well. We see DTC um, we, taking the yeah, bot We have ETC solo in against the Tassadar here. Oh. Um, this is actually, oh, we um, actually... Yeah, the rotation is kind of weird here. Uh, so we this see the 4-1 between mid and bot from the side of plan B. Yeah, I have never in my life actually seen this with the variant top and the rotation going bot mid. So the reason why you will normally don't do this, but go for the bot solo and the top mid rotation is because uh, top and mid are closer than bot and mid. So it definitely saves you a lot of time, but uh, we have I somehow... Don't actually... I, I think... Big part of it is like, I mean, if you get pushed in on top, that's a lot worse because boss is there and can provide you some issues later in the game, right? Yep, yep, uh, that as well. I mean, bot lane is the longest one and pretty relevant here. Even when the weavers are going, uh, as you know, they lose health over time, so they um, they get much less value on the bot lane than they do on the mid and top. Uh, but uh, we have now finally uh, uh, Varian in the solo lane and the rotation going uh, top mid, as uh, as God intended. Um, we do have the blue team uh, slightly ahead of the gems right now. Oh, they're actually equal. Uh, but the team with the Zul definitely uh, having an advantage right now here, mm -hmm. as uh, it allows them to clear pretty easily. Looks like things are going pretty... Fair so for the KT guys. Oh, there's a Coco and KT. That's a 12 stack KT. He doesn't really want to die here, but his team is there to save him. And Azul is actually now in some trouble. He manages to get away though. Does uh, better bomb to his took off. Yeah, four minutes silence though. There uh, allows them uh, very clean escape. Uh, 13 stacks as you said on KT. Seven stacks on ETC because of that uh, run to the bot lane. So that stacking is going really nicely. Mm -hmm. And, and now. Uh, Elite is losing some soak on top, so it's not yeah, too much. Yeah, they're actually, but... uh, actually um, kind of. So here we have a very interesting situation. Um, uh, sometimes because of the different lengths of the lanes, uh, one lane uh, will actually uh, come faster twice in a row. So it's uh, better to actually stay in that lane and self it. So this is what happened mid. They could have uh, easily cleared the wave mid and made it in time for the top one. But they just uh, kept rotating as they're used to. And uh, I mean, they didn't lose much. They lost like two minions. Uh, but still, you know, those little things count. Mm -hmm. If they did it, if they cleared the mid and went top and then held the enemy team top, the enemy team could have lost the entire wave themselves. So it could have actually been quite a quite decent play for them. Yeah, 16 stitches, stacks on KT. Stitches is getting engaged upon. He has used his. Sustainability manages to get away very low though. A lot of it was used for it and now... Oh, actually... Elite I had their... Um, what is it? Their Vala still in mid. Was able to soak a bit. And they are quite far ahead on champs right now actually. So. Uh, yeah, they actually have enough for a turn even. Mm -hmm. So plan B is gonna oh, have to oh, deny oh, that Zul gets the base upon a nice dash from the ETC. Yeah, very nice. Now, KT also completed his quests in the meantime, so he's gonna be a lot stronger, um, especially this early on, it's gonna do a lot for his damage output. Plan B actually having enough jumps to turn in, uh, Stitches might be in trouble, he manages to get out, but this will be enough 
for Plan B to actually uh, tune in. And Varian also managed to turn on bot, so that's uh, that's the first turn in. And early level 7 going to Plan B, so let's see what they can do with this. Mm -hmm. And let's look to the builds for a quick while. Varian seems to be going down still. Um, we have ETC going for Hammer on, which is kind of the least favored talent. On that tier, I think. I would have to agree. Um, the other yeah. talents seem pretty common, though. Mm -hmm. uh, pretty standard. Uh, KT with the quest this early. Let's actually think about that quest. It's not actually that strong, especially late game, right? Um, but if you can stack it this early, it, can, it, it actually does a lot of value because it's, uh, it's a flat number, not percentage. Um, its value is drastically increased through the game compared to the late game. Mm -hmm. So let's see if they can get some of it. Uh, CG with the Sylvanas here makes it pretty easy for them and this will be an early fort for them as yeah. well. Uh, top lane has been cleared and on the bottom we have Varian getting the wall. Shouldn't get much more. Mm -hmm. So, you know, from the first turn getting the... Oh, actually the fort is well, alive. This is <laughs> one HP but that should be an easy yeah, I mean, it's, problem to it, solve. Uh, it's it's gonna die to some poke. Maybe maybe they can be debated into into dying for it. Um, right, for try to turn in. Yeah. Oh, yeah, just look at that KT damage. Varian coming in as well, going for the finish on that Zul. Cast body block by the stage still makes it though. Zul actually 35 health manages to get away, but the stages will fall. Just dies with the with 20 gems. something gems. Yeah. Yep. They still have enough for a turn in, but it's a very different situation. Uh, the fort did fall in the meanwhile, mm -hmm. so this brings them much, much closer to level 10 if they manage to hit that 10 before being engaged upon when the stitches returns. Um, that should actually guarantee them another turn in, even though they're not close, if they can manage to go 10 well and, uh, and just so called the lanes. And there we go, uh, level 10 for plan B. We have Mosh, we have Silence and Double Silence Taunt variant. And Phoenix, so all pretty expected uh, talents here. So, um, considering they didn't actually have a soul laner, I wouldn't have minded to see, for example, even a, uh, a stage dive ETC uh, as the soul laner. But com considering uh, ETA, I don't actually have that many interrupts. It's uh, perfectly fine, and we have a strong push on the five men on the top lane, and the top but that allowed. Uh, elite AI to turn in, even though it's they a turn don't in without have level 10. Level 10. So they are close to level 10, and if they can get the wall, uh, oh, actually, Plan B is going for the keep. This should force Elite AI to go back. Mm, they, yep, they're gonna they are. first get level 10 though and make sure their wage at least a bit pushed in. Uh, but this is a, this is a free keep wall. That's, that's a lot of XP that brings them way closer to 13. Stitch is hook. Very nice attempt there. Doesn't hit though. Something I have noticed this game, the stitches hooks uh, have been pretty decent, but the follow-up doesn't seem to be there always. So there might have been a bit of a miscommunication on the, t on the side of Elite AI. Yeah, um, so, I mean, you know this best, but when you're playing stitches, you always want to announce your hook. Even if they are going to hit or miss, doesn't matter. Uh, when you announce it, the Malfurion player should instantly put his root down, uh, where the hook targets will come on, even if he doesn't see if the target hit. And this... he should definitely save his roots only for that. That allows you that that one time when it hits, it's it's almost a guaranteed kill. Same for the Stuko, of course, in this in this case. Um, Stuko should put the silence on the other. Yeah, I mean, whatever follow up you have, is it Malfurion or Stukov? Um, you know, they they always need to be in position and absolutely ready even before the you know you see if the hook target is going to land or not. And especially in this in this draft, like you can say, yeah, but uh, the Zul put his root down. Um, it's kind of uh, a different Zul... situation because it takes like some time to actually um, get the Zul root down, and that time the ETC can slide out, the Varian can charge or something. Yeah, exactly. That uh, it takes a while for the root nice to come down. Nice silence here from the self kills the stuk of Zul now also running for his life will fall here as well. Stitches kind of. Goes back in, might be a mistake as DTC now should be able to slide, doesn't choose to do so. They do have they to manage to grab some of the gems, but it's still a big problem. 
Yeah, they they definitely can get the turn in. They have a talent lead and they have enough gems and two men up. So this should be a turn in. And with the Sylvanas and a talent ahead, uh, this is actually quite a problem for Lite Eye. This should probably even be a completely free fort here with the Sylvanas. Ah, uh, yeah, should be. Um, we Lite might see quite... a good hook kill one of the Plan B guys. And If and... they are careless, they can definitely go for that. Uh, let's see, we have a hook, and will there be the follow-up? No, they all go retreat behind the walls, but the, the thing is... Oh, there's a nice hook on it, see, no follow-up. The, the thing is, the walls don't really help you um, when when there's a Sylvanas in play. They they don't actually provide as much... Oh, that's um, insane damage from the KT. Both the Pyro and then the bomb Ooh. spreading, and then the... Now the weapon actually weapon. almost yeah. finishing two of, uh, of the Elite AI guys. Um, so now this is Lead looking AI to be an early keep, 10 minutes. First keep might not let it be falling. Taunt on the Varian is there, ETC slides in as well. This Stukov will fall. Now Varian looking to keep going. Waiting for his taunt cooldown, 7 seconds. If he can get uh, 1 or 2 more kills, this could actually turn out to be game already. It's 4 against 5. Uh, they are looking to play it safe. ETC um, still has pit on and no end traps are available now. So at ETC can just slide in on that Valor that stitches I, and pretty I, sure he gets I do think with this situation, with the talent up and the man up, they should have just walked through the um, the fountain and disabled the fort. They didn't need to go all around. I think they lost a few precious seconds on that mm -hmm. uh, web weaver. Now they Although will get they level 16 the with, this, with this keep. So yeah, the three keeps down four and two talents ahead, up. That's, that's two talents up as they, well. They should, they should be definitely going go for super the game. aggro yeah, right yeah. now. They are deciding to back off and probably go for the boss, which might be a bit of a mistake in, in, in their part right now. Um, they probably can end with the boss, but they most definitely... Uh, the Elite AI now has a talent up, which is much less horrible than being two talents down. Mm -hmm. So they definitely should have went... Elite AI only also has a turn in. They can and turn, that turn in. in so yeah, at least yeah. they won't be passive from mids and bots. They're actually the... one jump short, but should get it here. Yeah, they actually get the turn in. So the turn in will definitely help in the defense against boss. So overall, Plan B, it's not looking... looking to catch that Zul and that Vala. They're oh, kind of lagging Zul behind. Vala definitely it behind here is a mosh. The hook is there to save him though, but it's already too late for the Vala. She gets stunned and killed by the Varian. Now that boss is going through the web weaver at the moment, will ignore it as it usually does. Now Varian is there again. Does uh, just an insane oh, amount of completely out of position. damage. So kind of out of position. This took off a fire as well. Like he gets his position by the ETC. Varian on warpath will taunt here. Zul now going to fall. Katie okay, just throws some extra damage in for fun. Stitches will yeah. fall here as well. That's uh, that stitches and we have and the GPs the... being called out. Going very ferocious here in this first game after all that pent up, um, after all that pent up energy from waiting. <laughs> yeah, definitely. We had some, some delays, but a very one sided game here for Pan beat uh, nine kills to zero. And uh, first game of the series after, as you said, a lot of delays going to them. Uh, in very convincing fashion, they actually got insane value from that Sylvanas in the end. Uh, they were man they managed to take um, two forts, uh, three forts actually only from the Sylvanas value and then the keeps as well. Uh, sometimes even without the web weavers. So overall, um, very good game for them, very nice use of the Sylvanas and uh, the KT early game stacking was also, also very good. Uh, Elitea kind of looked a little bit disorganized there, uh, spreading the bombs and uh, pretty much eating. All the, all the raw damage from KT. Yeah, a lot of KT value in this game, I would say. They did a big part in their uh, in their win. Um, or at least in, in this convincing of a, of a victory, I would say. Um, uh, yep. Then you also had, like, the, the Varin, who I didn't really expect to have such a huge impact. He did very nicely. Um, it did a lot that Elite I didn't really draft. Uh, a star lane that I could push in well. Um, like the, the test that can hold the lane, but he's certainly not gonna gonna punish Varian too much. 
Uh, yeah, that's absolutely true. Um, the Tassadar can defend his lane, uh, but definitely didn't punish the Varian pick in any way. He didn't even manage to get that much uh, stacking, which is a little bit weird against uh, a melee opponent. I, I remember seeing at one moment he had less than 10 stacks, while KT had more stacks. And, I mean, KT needs to hit people with uh, a cooldown-based ability, and the... Um, Whereas the Tassadar literally just needs to right click on people. Uh, so, plan B goes for Battlefield of Eternity. So, let's make the lobby and uh, Elite AI will be having the first pick. Uh, lobby is up. Uh, you already linked it? Yeah. Um... Uh, I think the T2 gets the. Um, first pick, right? Team 2 is plan B, so... Yeah, they get... Uh... Oh, no, sorry, Elite I get uh, the first pick, my bad. Okay, so we have Vision should be on the left. Um, so yeah, we did... So we're going to Battlefield of Eternity now, which is another very team fighting map. Um, all about that objective. Um, okay, it's we have a map where you can use Sylvanas quite uh, quite easily. Avatar, as he tries to invade <laughs> us. Um, so let's make you play. Um, so can we uh, can we get a quick recap on who's on the right side and who's on the right side? Uh, Terra, nice guy, Chauncey and Neo. Uh, actually, you need to switch Dorzal. No, okay. Dorzal's on the, on the... Oh, okay, then, then the teams are good. Uh, the rest I remember, so the teams are good, I would say. Okay, let's quickly change to the draft overlay then, and give Plan B the much-deserved win on the screen. Um, so yeah, both teams seem to be ready, so we will go then into our draft. Um, so yeah. Um, Garrosh is still banned, right? Yep, Garrosh is still banned. I'm not even sure. I was kind of away for a while, so I'm not sure when he will become available, but it should be soon. I think it's around 7. Um, so possibly next week, right? Mm-hmm. But I'm not 100% here on this immediate surprise, <laughs> yeah, uh, man. Uh, I, I, I mean, how I absolutely, uh, this was expected, as, uh, as I mean, the Sylvanas was a major factor in them winning that game and gaining such a uh, game mm -hmm. advantage. And we even have Mr. Nice Guy, um, obviously pre-picking Sylvanas. This is actually something, guys. Um, it, this happened to me when you pre-pick a character. And then you have the emotes of that character, and then you type them into draft all the enemy team can actually see um, what you're pre-picking. Mm -hmm. So um, don't don't get uh, debated by communicating with enemy team with emotes and accidentally uh, showing them your pre-picks. <laughs> Unless you want to troll, obviously. Mm -hmm. So especially on this map. Um, Sylvanas can be even more. I mean, I mean, you remember? I don't remember which game it was, but during a scrim, I actually did that. Yeah, so yeah, they, I do remember they, it. Something yeah. to do with Shogal, I think. Uh, um, I don't think it was. No, it was. Uh, it was. Yeah, in one of our customs, I actually uh, did with the Illidan, so they banned my Illidan. Could have been possible as well. Um, so now we have Vala being man as well. Vala, of course, one of those other very strong racers. Um, we do see on this map. Um, this leaves and, still and some... the did did play it. Uh, I don't think they got a lot of value uh, of the of the Vala last game. But I mean, it's kind of hard to judge since they were uh, quite behind um, since level five or six. I, I would uh, say that the Vala is very dependent on how well the stitches took off Soul. Um, pull off their CC chain. Um, that, that, that's that's also true, but uh, again, I mean, it's hard. It's hard any for any uh, sustained DPS when you're you know so behind. 
mm-hmm. to actually do stuff. But also, as you said, like Vala is simply considered the, the best racer in the game. Um, and we have Liming who is actually very decent in this map. Uh, this is one of her better maps. And then Lunara on the other side, um, with Vala gone other than Greyman and the Greyman as well. So this is probably the two best racers that are left. So uh, Plan B already going very heavy for the objective game. Uh, let's see how Elite Elite I... will respond. Yeah, Elite, I should hopefully recognize this and change their comp into defensive. I mean, they Liming is is both good on defense and the offense. Uh, she does have decent race, so it's not it's not all lost. If they pick the Rhaegar as their support, for instance, uh, and another good racer, they can still contest. I would say, especially since Lunara only gets her race after seven. Um, but they did win Stitches last game, uh, and Stitches is very strong in this map, even though he you didn't can, get that much value. You you can go for like. Some early race with Rhaegar, but late game you can't really beat him anymore. Yeah, I, I think they they realized this and go for a reset and... comp. It looks like picking both yeah. Li Ming and Genji. Uther, of course, very good against the Genji, so it's a nice healer for them to pick him themselves. Uh, especially so... with uh, Uther with to empower the Genji, um, giving him with the uh, the armor some much needed um, mm-hmm. defense and with the potential of Divine Shield uh, Dragon Blade. Mm-hmm. To absolutely wreak havoc on the defense. Of course, um, one thing should be noted: Uther does do poorly against the Lunara, um, especially now with the like with the recent nerfs as well to the armor. Mm-hmm. It's gonna be even more pronounced. I, that's absolutely true. Uh, on the other hand, um, Uther. Um, um, Guardian of Ancient Kings can do very well if you are uh, forced to fight on the Immortal Stuns. You can, um, you can um, use those stuns. Well, if you're getting Immortal Stuns, I think that's <laughs> kind of negative either way. Um, I mean, walking into a stun for 50% damage reduction. Uh, yeah, but you just walked <laughs> into a stun. <laughs> yeah, but I mean, 50% damage reduction for, what, 3 seconds? 4? 3? Uh, the... Three seconds if you go for the quest. Yeah, three with the quest. So Which I mean, I will be heavily monitoring the, the time the quest gets done. <laughs> as as you expect. Um, Heart is banned on one side, so Heart is this... well against the Greyman. Um... Heart is does work well against the Greyman and is strong on this map. Uh, but uh, could this be show off on a potential Illidan pick? Um, I don't think so. They have Uther and Illidan Greyman. Like, Illidan can get just knocked down by the Uther. That, that's um, true, but uh, Illidan does, does do very well against both Liming and Genji. Um, if, if both of those heroes rely on their mobility and sort of attacking for range, uh, Genji relies on just staying just tightly, little bit outside of your range and constantly poking, and uh, with Illidan's counter mobility, he can actually get on you and uh, provide some very decent damage. Uh, the Ebels here, so can we be expecting... So actually, the Diablo uh, band from the last map uh, might actually suggest that both teams did some research and that um, that uh, Diablo is a common fix for Plan B. Mm-hmm. So uh, I'm, I'm actually very happy to see especially teams in lower division actually doing yeah. Uh, they're scouting. So the silence um, can work against the Genji, kind of. Um, the range is quite big, so... I mean, also considering the next two picks should be uh, both warrior melee warriors, or at least melee characters, uh, the silence has the potential to get quite a lot of value. Mm-hmm. Diablo also works quite nice against the Genji. As he has also, some also Root is always a decent follow-up to the uh, to the flip. Mm-hmm. So yeah, the team of Plan B, uh, the draft of Plan B so far seems to be going pretty well. Um, Litia is kind of up in the air there, as I still need to choose their tank and their solo laner. Uh, oh. Two and a half seconds for with, uh, with the Uther request. Is that changed? Wasn't uh, it three? It's three seconds, I'm pretty sure. 
unless those nerfs were in the most recent patch notes. Some angels will be joining us here as Tyrael and Malthel get picked up. Malthel, one of the very good racers as well, um, and does well against Dibbles here as, as well. Um, the odds um, can be very strong if there's like no perfect focus on the side of plan B. I mean, with the uh, potential sanctification, the ult becomes even stronger. Mm -hmm. And uh, this is actually very good because it allows you, uh, if you're already going for the defense, you still want that one hero that actually has a lot of DPS so that when you win the fight for the defense, especially early game, for example, pre-10, you still want uh, at least one hero to be able to actually go on DPS. And we again have uh, up there two complete full tanks. So no, they are, they're completely forfeiting the traditional uh, bruiser soul laner and simply going for two full tanks uh, setup. So this is uh, apparently a signature move for them. Mm, I don't know how well the Grimming does against the Maltel. He can cocktail, he can kind of keep a, a range, uh, 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 yeah, out of range. Uh, Grimmin, uh, I mean, it's obviously skill matchup, but in theory, Grimmin sh should absolutely, because Malfell should lose to any range hero, um, because his strength comes from teleporting on you, going full melee on you, and then healing, and if he can't actually attack you, he can't kill you. Uh, as long as you stay out of, out of his W, he can't come onto you. So, Grimmin is a range hero, he should be able to poke him forever, but mm -hmm. it comes down to skill. Uh, Maltel can W minions, if Grimmin stands too close to the minions, he will uh, get teleported on and get damage and then loses the trade. Um, but again, Maltel should uh, straight up lose. But if they choose to put uh, maybe a noob record Diablo um, in the soul lane, that's their soul laner uh, player, and they choose to be rigid like that, then both of those heroes should be in quite a lot of trouble. Mm -hmm. So, on the left hand side, we have Elite AI once more with Gentle Solat on Malthel, Maxi Monster playing the Tyrell Bergen on the Uther Vision playing his Genji, and Halon on Leeming. Do you want to introduce the right side, Alex? The battle begins in Looks like we might have lost Alex for just a bit, so let's introduce our right hand team. We have Plan B in the red. With Terror playing in the back, Chansey on Diablo, Mr. Nice Guy playing Lunara Dazzle on Grayman and Leon O'Neill on Malfurion. So it looks like it's actually Lunara going to the top lane. Which kind of makes sense. <laughs> okay, we can hear you once again. So, welcome. Oh, sorry. Uh, I, was, uh, wasn't, uh, I was doing the introduction and then realized oh. you probably can't hear you when you were doing it as well. <laughs> Cheba. Um, it's fine. It's probably my internet. So, one thing I have noticed about like Radia's draft, um, with the, the pickup of Tyrael, um, they are kind of forced to be very aggressive when it comes to engaging. Because um, like that Lunara is gonna do so much um, in like in like a normal team fight, Tyrael. Like the Uther can't keep it up, the Tyrael has to shield a lot of the times, which puts him out of mana very quickly. So... Um, Tyrael actually shield... Tyrael himself has a baseline um, spell armor. So he, by default, does decently against the Lunara, right? Is this, and is also, the poison spell damage? Yes, yes, poison is spell damage. Um, and also, um, Tyrael on maps that are essentially like this can forfeit some damage and go for um, the full shield build, right? Uh, when you're death balling and fighting as five. And that might actually gain a lot of value in this map because it's technically sustained shielding. And if they keep grouping up, um, it can it can lead to quite a large um, something, prevention of Lunara, Poison, and Greyman. Oh. Something I just thought of... Um... Can you go judgment here? Just judge the mouth, kill the mouth with like all your dive. I mean, then... you can between levels ten and thirteen. 
so I don't think it's quite Twilight worth it. Twilight, the mob gets, uh, gets uh, uh, I, I think I think the idea was to simply go for the uh, for the sanctification for the mouth, mouth here because like an, an indestructible mouth mouth no, Martial can actually uh, wreck the other team. Um, we are having the blue team defend, but they aren't doing that great of a job. But it's four against five, and Malthel is on the immortal, not actually doing that much of a damage. So they might actually want to bring oh Tyrael in trouble here. He does manage Lange to get is out. Very low though. Genji. Yeah, they are very low. Genji goes Just deep, manages to get out. Oh, oh well, that's that a beautiful lemming bulb, and that forces Genji the looking to finish. To his shurikens can't reach just far enough. Actually, he kind of greets there. Oh, Will get punished. Diablo so takes him off. Immortal mm -hmm. gets down to the first half, though, and the Martel did a lot on this one. This might give Elite AI the advantage. As um, yeah, Grimmin is on the Immortal as well, so I think they actually lose this race. Uh, I mean, the, oh, the red team yeah, the should Grimmin win this race easily. It. Yeah, uh, I that's, thought they, uh, the they stood better of a chance there. Um, Litar was kind of not immediately there to damage the Immortal, and Plan B was maybe able to catch up a bit um, due to that. But still, yeah, that, that game in damage just so insane. This is something interesting. Uh, also, actually chooses to go back to his solo lane instead of defending the Immortal. Where I would say he would be way more useful oh, than uh, Genji or Limingus. Genji should have, in my opinion, went to the solo lane and Mothal should have switched to defend. Uh, it's obviously not the same if you're attacking or defending, but on the defense, Mothal should definitely be there, as he will do much more damage than Genji. The Immortal will fall here, doing a ah, quarter of la life. Damage to the to the fall. I mean, fountain went down and the entire wall. So this is essentially what you want from the first immortal, since they didn't have a lot of shields. It's pretty decent. Uh, bush gang here uh, on the camp. A bit chaotic. The Genji gets stunned by oh, the Genji gets looted actually as well. Um, Uther at 31 stacks right now. A bit behind. No, you can do better. Come on, guys. Um, <laughs> uh -huh. But yeah, fight seems to be pretty equal though, um, right now. Of course, plan B is gonna have the slight advantage with the fun. Like we mentioned earlier, the Diablo is always gonna have fun um, doing these like small sustain battles because once he gets a globe, he's basically just going back to full. Yep, uh, uh, he trades um, quite well, especially since uh, Elite AI doesn't actually have a fountain anymore, so they can't really afford to trade with uh, Plan B, as Plan B can just go back tap and go back to the fight. So because of that, this should actually mean um, they can get this. Oh, Genji gets caught by the Diablo, does manage to escape last second, but this should be a camp for um, Plan B right now. Unless Tuli Min gets some nice poke off, and she's certainly trying to do some nice flanks here. Um, but still, the cap is going over to Plan B. Which, with the, the mortal spawning very soon, we didn't see any of the teams going for the um, shaman camps. But still, this um, the spear towers. Um, the thing is, both Liming and uh, Genji, yes, they are the famous reset combo, right? But they aren't, they, both of them are finishers, essentially. Uh, their poke is very limited. Uh, even Liming poke is very limited unless she gets perfect orbs, and often. So you can't really count on that. You kind of need uh, the mouth out there in the team fight to get those people low for them to finish. Oh, looks like Bergen has left the team, of course. The teams are responsible for pausing. Um, and Ubarak gets kind of confused and takes some poke. Okay. Looks like he has rejoined us on time. So this um, Elite AI's Immortal has actually gone down, da gone down quite a bit. The immortals are now on about equal HP. Let's see how this race goes. The Anub actually goes in to delay a bit. Tries to chase away the Liming, which will prevent at least some damage. Immortals race is happening very close now. 
It's Oops. getting more Oops. than it's gonna fall first, so Elite AI is gonna get favored with this one. Um, so, this is actually um, something very interesting that often happens. People think they have the stronger race, so they are kind of late to the immortal. But that's the thing, it doesn't matter if your race is stronger if you're not there to do it. So, um, even with the much stronger race, Lunara just got her nature's calling, uh, they managed to lose this, uh, this immortal because they were definitely late for it. Mm -hmm. Immortal won't be able to accomplish too much, only the wall, maybe not even completely that, it looks like. I mean, Lunara on the defense is also insanely strong at this mm -hmm. map, Nature's Calling just, just shreds that Immortal, as, as we can see. Now we uh, see the gauge coming, the counter -gauge. Tyrell is kind of low on mana already, he manages to get his sword out just on time. And Elite AI has half a level lead, which might be great once they hit that level 10 in just a moment. Uh, should be looking to avoid any fights before that though. Um, yeah, their, their 10 will be there, but it won't during the objective. So it's um, it might be a little bit tricky for them to get some advantage. So they might um, they might want to posture in time and be ready for that. Uh, Plan B recognizes this and uh, completely retreats. Uh, it's still interesting for me that that Malthal insists on leaning against Lunara. I think a switch there between Genji and Malthal uh, would have been much more useful for them as, as Malthal isn't really doing anything there. He, he isn't even stacking his quest well uh, or at all because he is, uh, he is Ooh, pushed Anoop up kind against of Lunara. goes in the wrong way there. Doesn't get punished as heavily I would, as I would have expected. Genji can just jump away. The Uther is almost done with his stacks, kind of late on that one. Um, both, yeah, both teams finally hitting level 10 now. Looks like I clicked the wrong button here. Sorry guys. This was a nice close-up on the Maltel. Um Oh yeah, actually as the chat is reminding us, we do have the potential of, uh, of judgment into X-Strike. That's not unheard of, and uh, and actually completely viable. Uh, I, 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 I'll tell you about judgment, and it's okay. Yeah, judgment, but uh, with the extract, that's a bit of a different story. And uh, <laughs> both Tyrio and Uther will be falling here, and they kept going to plan B. Very unfortunate, just before the objective. Uh, Ming also going here. And uh, yeah, Ming will be falling down as well. Uh, Lunara already on the immortal um, alpha. Choosing to completely ignore the race and staying to clear uh, that those two minions. That's some very important soak. Those two. It's definitely worth to have someone like Malthal on the mortal to lower the shield potential uh, of it. And uh, Plan B actually uh, leading the XP race now because of those kills. Uh, and uh, of the ults, we do have the Sanctification and the Dragon Blade with the Divine Shield as expected. Fermented Souls, Disintegrate for the Cocoon, and then Cocoon, Apoc, Turn Wide, and go for the Throat, not the Bullet. Um, interesting. Other than that, all expected ults, I would say. Mm -hmm. A lot of engages and happening right now, the Cocoon is immediately there, but Lunara is already falling, the Divine Shield Genji is just wrecking that backline, going in for one kill, two kills, three kills, Tyrael has fallen, but his trade will allow him to do some damage as well. Now the Anoop and the Diablo are running for their life, but Li Ming is high on the heels of the Diablo, and it was a well oh, trying to Malfell Malfell gets, yeah, he will survive, but that is the last minute W, uh, very nice, and this will actually... Give them the win on the Immortal, very nice team fight there. They should also uh, be, the, the, the Diablo should also be very happy he got away because um, he keeps his souls with that and will allow him to stay strong uh, in these fights. Yeah, I mean, if he died, uh, he alone couldn't have done anything. Uh, and now Elite AI actually uh, decides to fall back. This is very, very, very interesting. Oh, it's uh, Genji and uh, Liming are both out of mana. So this might actually give a chance for Plan B to win this Immortal. They're going hard on it. They're doing the DPS. Uh, there's a cocoon. There's the Apoc. Sank, Sank goes down. down very nice. The Immortal is and already the, gone mm, though. That's a three-man silence right there. Tyrael very low. Let me get some Night Spoke. Diablo is deep within the enemy team. Everyone dropping low. And there's the first... Uh, third Immortal, sorry. 
um, actually m managing to go to plan B. Yeah. So I, I think that was a huge, huge mistake that Elite AI chose to go back even with the Genji leaning out of mana, they literally completely just gave up the Immortal for I think that was no like another mistake made under the under the banner of oh, we're just gonna play it safe and yeah. get healthy before. But like for for the, those people who have watched this cast in the past, we, we usually ramble at least one or two times in, <laughs> in a series about this. Where it's not because um, you're not doing anything that you're making the safe play. Um, Sometimes it's much better to just secure something than um, than to wait a bit and give the enemy team time to respond or uh, or uh, get back alive. Yep, I mean, um, even if you if even if one person died there on the attack, if you got it mortal, it would have been so much better. Even if you don't get any value, and you probably would have gotten at least a fort. Here you lost uh, a complete keep wall and uh, for and even. Lost the kill for absolutely no reason. There was no reason to back off. They were both at quarter of mana, so they weren't even like completely at um. They were at quarter mana and just figured, as you said, like let's play safe. You aren't playing it safe. You are you're doing the absolute opposite. Um, top camp being taken by Plan B. Elite responds with the mid camp of their own. They're probably just afraid and want to put some pressure on the map. Uh, plan B rotating bot, they will probably be going for their camp, Elite AI will take the time to grab the shaman camp of their enemies. Uh, plan B actually recognizes this. This was actually some very greedy play for the mob, face checking the oh, bush for themselves. Sang Sang goes down. Very nice. Kukun actually saves the um, the Martel for the second pair of you. And the first target down will be a noob and then the Grey Man. That was a very push. messy fight. They stood in the ult of uh Malthel that didn't get um didn't get cocooned. I think the wrong target definitely got cocooned. Yeah, Uther got cocooned there by accident and then Utero actually was gonna fall at that moment. Um uh, I, I don't think uh he got cocooned by accident. I think the I mean the plan was to cocoon the Uther so he can't uh, they shield the uh, the mouth out, but I mean, as you said, at that moment, between whether he decided who will cocoon, he should have changed his um, target because Uther was going down anyway. Mm -hmm. um, Sang denied the APOC, which was very nice, um, and the APOC was a little bit greedy and too early, I would say. Um, like if, if you're gonna level... do the APOC there, uh, you certainly need to be in position to actually disrupt that Terial from casting side. I mean, Diablo was in the position, he was just too slow to do it. Mm -hmm. He ha definitely had the tools. Uh, oh, any Martel of his, uh... is not here right now. He's still rotating in, but he engaged. Doesn't do anything. Elite AI desperately wants to get 16 as fast as possible. The Greymane went for Liming there, might have been a bit out of position now. Yeah, Malthus is gonna soak the 16, which is definitely um, a good choice. Uh, Plan B should use this and get as much damage on the Immortal before 16 as they are 4 in the fight. Mm -hmm. Malthus does come back, doesn't get the 16 yet. Ooh, no. This is kind of awkward still. Um, well, Plan B definitely. Them, Plan B retreats. And yeah, they're, they're, they're afraid of that passive XP, uh, apparently, and they just give up the fight they, and the mortal at this point. This is a bit strange. They still had like 10 to I mean, 20 look at solid this. seconds, like still, it, still no 16. Even more, even more. Look, there's half a minute now, and they still don't have the 16. They should have definitely used it. Uh, we do have a pause. Oh, uh, another we have DC. A, another DC. Um, so yeah, still no 16 hit. They should definitely have done that now. They're defending and like there, there's no real safe soak opportunities for them to get 16 themselves on time. So now, uh, I don't know how long it will take for um, for Elite AI to get that 16 naturally, but with the rotation still coming in, they might have they might have already gotten it by the time. Plan B arrives. Yeah, now now they will definitely. I think Plan B misjudged the amount of passive XP you are getting. Oh, wait, I need to pause. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so we do have two wave stop, uh, two blue waves that can be soaked. 
So sending one person to soak with further defense wouldn't be the worst choice uh, for plan B. Uther but gets knocked in by the uh, Diablo. Uther very low here, does fall. Sank, Sank is still coming down. Uther is still late. there with his straight though, and the reset comp is Yay. made with this kind of stuff. The silent is huge, will allow them to get away, but the mob still falls. Diablo will get himself back to safety. Um, the silence did a lot in securing at least some of their members, but of course this two for one trade is not really what you want, ideally. Uh, the engage Luther was awesome. Uh, I was just about to say that even without the 16 on the immortal stuns, you should be fine. So the engage Luther uh, was fine, except it's an Luther. It it gives you a few seconds of him healing better than he should have, and then with the mouth ult going down and sanked right on top of it. It secured um, the rest of the kills well, with the mouth. You have the Dragon Blade and the Liming just doing insane amounts of damage. Especially so... with, with how the Diablo engaged. So, like the Diablo knocked them over, knocked the Uther over, and knocked them back into his own team, which kind of exposed exposed his own backline because now the Diablo is suddenly at the back of the very uh, very back of the team. It's that um, Nubarak that has to defend, but the Nubarak himself isn't. Uh, um, bulkiest of tanks. So the thing is, the idea was good, right? The um, but it was a little Kirill bit too greedy. That was oh, Kirill. oh, oh the white that's shield a actually had to be blocked. Yeah, an immortal is going on top in the meanwhile. 16 v 16, though it's 45. Tiril better get back before that cocoon gets him. The Diablo is already looking for it. I think they made a horrible misplay here. Can she? Um, they tried to get some value uh, with five of them, but they should have probably realized they don't actually have a sieging comp. This co this could have worked if they actually had a sieging comp. If they had um, decent, if they had the Lunar and the Grey main to actually do damage to those forts, uh, that could have been good. But on the other hand, they did nothing in the bot lane. The Immortal got um, got the fort, but I think if they just went with it, they could have gotten so much more. The, uh, it's, it's the thing where you have to realize what kind of comp you have. You have a teamfight comp, you, you don't have a sieging comp, that's that's it. And they are now going to lose the, the fort in the bot lane. So they managed to get an immortal with more than half health, and they are still behind. Ah, uh, they're not behind, I would say. They are, um, they are half level ahead. Oh, yeah, sorry. They are, Which... They're actually like the same. I, I don't know why I thought they had a fort uh, less. They're actually around the same, even a yeah, slight experience lead. And versus a slight which might come into play with the level 20s and the immortal spawns. It might, but uh, I I predict um, at least one more huge um, fight on the objective without the 20s. I yeah. don't think any of the teams will be... I mean, I don't think Elite will be patient enough so, to wait for the 20s. Plan B uh, decides well, to... Gentle... Disconnects once again. Um, so yeah, Elite AI talking about patient. They will be patient enough to save this uh, shaman camp before the like until yeah, the immortal spawns. Both teams uh, have actually uh, re uh, have cleared the shaman camps, but let's see if they will both be saving it. Plan B is saving it, but uh, I think that Genji is running towards the camp to take it, but he might. Um, go back last minute. Although, if any of them are watching the stream, it should catch up. Maybe these are tactical pauses, <laughs> uh, so they can... they can. Uh... So we can take another look maybe at our talents here. Um, and talents seem to be pretty standard as far as... Yeah, as far as I can see. Um, Mm, oh, actually, the small went for life seat, which is kind of an unusual talent. Um, I would say the, the ice block is is way more impactful, especially against um, their kind of comp, which um, wants to blow you up. Um, so yeah, that was. Maybe not the best. Yeah, uh, the, this is what what happened. The ping is actually resolved. He was uh, he had his battle net app, and it was probably downloading the update. So he had. Uh, oh, that's bad, man. 
We also see um, the Uthergo for well met, which can work against the Greyman, um, who does a lot of damage and he's an easy target to actually hit for the Uther. Okay, we should not have any more problems. Seems good. Uh, okay. Okay. Let's go. Uh, yeah, but both teams will be uh, patient on their. Um, Mortal does spawn. Looks like the objective will hit way before any team has a chance to get level 20. So, unless this goes. This fight goes super long. Oh, actually, Terio, can he scatter that? Invade. He can steal it. Will he check? Oh, oh, just that second too late. The place could have been made here, sadly enough. It doesn't look like it. The armor yeah, is kind of ended. slow on this one. Elitia has a drop here. Kenji going in already. Kun is down, Lunara already falling, Silence is huge though, will manage to get the guys from Elite Light to back off at least for a little bit, but still one kill on Lunara does do a lot for them. Um, yeah, that, that kill on Lunara brings them not only closer to level 20, it gives them essentially free reign uh, on the Immortal as Lunara is almost half their DPS. With this they can actually, I think, race, even though Elita is faster, uh, on, uh, even though Plan B is faster. On them, I, I think oh. this should be. If they send Ming the... away, though, they might not actually have the days anymore. Um, well, uh, Malthal, Malthal has his level 16, so his race oh, potential right. drastically went up. Uh, so they they still should have. And uh, the Ming defending and getting 20 is actually a pretty good choice. Uh, Lunar is still not back, so this should be um, a free mortal and level 20. Plan B definitely should go on the defense they should see oh, it three against only three four people now. here though they can get yeah doesn't look like they will have it um that's sad they still have face only ming they're waiting for lunara now this engage should happen right now like immediately the um, loop should Here's the thing that I, I see happening in this game. Uh, Plan B is too scared of the other team hitting their talents. Um, yeah, obviously, does a oh, lot. devastating charge. Both Sank and the Divine save. Shield get used there. But Tyrael keeps going well. in. Tyrael is dead here. Tyrael did not have to die. Both ults were used to save him, and then he went in with Still no counter to that. Plan B now zoning to at least try and get the immortal, but the immortal also is already down. down. Ming kind of grease the immortal there, he was already secured. Two people down, so this immortal shouldn't do too much, but will at least require a response from Plan B. Uh, I, uh, Unless they get another kill, kill then they can make a mistake. This. Yeah, uh, Maltel way out Looks of like position. Maltel pops the ult, gets knocked back by Diablo. Actually, can he escape, actually? Kind of. Oh my god, he actually... If the... Malthel went down, that could have been game. Ooh, now the Greyman gets poked down here. There was a bit of a miscommunication between the Diablo and the Nubarak. Uh, Nubarak already committed to his stun, and then the Diablo knocked uh, Malthel back last second. Now the Anub... Uh, does a very short battle. Uh, both teams are very hesitant here on their engages. The Kuhn being used so once more. Kuhn? Greyman going in on the back line. Should... Kill the cocoon, oh, the that Lumingi! Anubrak manages to get there, and that's a kill. And Genji also went in. That's that's that's. They a have lost keep though, and they have to go back right now. Otherwise, that immortal is gonna start hitting. They the can also go for yeah. Uh, both teams very hesitant. Uh, I, I I think um, bo both teams could have punished this so hard if they just chose to do one thing. Elite AI kept chasing with three people against five, which is never a good choice. If Plan B turned around at a good point, they could have killed them, killed the keep, and went for so the core. Instead, they lost the keep, and Elite AI wasn't punished for chasing three against five. Um, so, yeah, it ended up uh, good for Elite AI, but could have definitely um, went pretty bad, <laughs> I would say. Mm -hmm. Yeah, they were uh, they were very careless with three people. I will say with Malthal being out of position, Malthal managed to escape so last minute there, and 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 again on the bot lane when Tyrell and Uther died, that was completely unnecessary as well. Um, quite a few mistakes uh, adding up here. 
So yeah, now... Uh, plan... Yeah. Yeah, plan B is gonna have to deal with top lane pushing for the rest of the game. Um, so, Shaman Camp will at least prevent some of that, but if Elite Air plays it right, they can kind of um, force some good fights, um, some favorite fights for themselves. Um, I mean, it's 5 against 5 now, uh, so yeah, anything like, can happen. You, you just need to stall long enough for your top lane to... That's absolutely true, that's the reason why um, Plan B will be more eager to fight um, than Elite AI at this point. Um, they are going top to clear the camp, and that will put a lot of pressure on the top lane. Elite AI should be either looking to get a very early start on the race, uh, or looking to respond if they get and a bush try and gank force here, a fight. Maybe. I mean, bush gank, if you can kill a target before the sanct or the, the shield comes down, it's very good, but they decide to gank without a bush. I mean, that's that shouldn't work. They get an early start they get the on race. the race. They feel like we can take this race. They were earlier on the Immortals as well. So, uh, I mean, even for Litai, this isn't the worst case uh, to race until half and then defend because Plan B doesn't have that much time. Mm, there's already three catapults moving towards it. Yeah, so exactly. So plan, plan, B, plan B doesn't uh, doesn't have the time, so they will either have to give it up oh, or like or take the fight Elite on the Immortal. Is committing to fight right now. Oh, Noob getting zoned up very nicely there. Um, Kun. Sank going down Sank very nice. Sank to Malthel. Dragon Blade gets one target. The target. Blocked actually. Tibbles trying to hold on for his dear life, but will fall here as well. Now it's only the Malf. Why aren't they finishing right now? I don't know. <laughs> the, this is GG. Yeah, they, they realize okay. it now as well. Um, so Diablo is back, but Diablo it's just a small Diablo yeah. now, yeah. yeah. Oh, can he get the kill on the mouth? No, he gets a kill last second. He should have actually tried for that kill and stayed on him even without the abilities or anything because now he won't he won't do anything. And if he got the mouth kill, uh, mouth will die though. <laughs> kind of wait, big. wait, wait. If what this, is happening if this here? Is a turn on, I, what, I'm just getting what confused. What is happening here? The, the, the catapults at least know which target they have to go for. Oh, yeah, the <laughs> Diablo is ignoring the catapults. He does manage to... Nice. What is happening here? It's 15%! Just go for it! Oh my god, they decide to back off I mean, and play it they safe. They're not playing it safe! They, they have sank them, so because they can just get the shield. Sank, sank is a cooldown, but 15% but <laughs> <laughs> is a few auto attacks. It's 27th minute, it's... The, the core stopped like, gaining health. They, they even have Uther, which is co who's coming back, and like the Tyrell yeah. who's gonna explode on that core, so... I mean, exactly. If, if you literally suicide for it, it If they not lose the Immortal, I'm just gonna... gonna lose the Immortal! <laughs> this is perfect example of not playing it. You, you aren't playing it safe, you're, you just potentially lost the game. The, I even mean, with 4 versus 5, this is 27 minute Immortal, they, this they can win the game. They see 3 people on, on the bot lane, why aren't they moving in towards that core? It looks like yeah, they finally they, are going to... They, they, plan need B to they just need to rest. Yeah. They do have the Sang back up, so... Yeah, Plan, plan B need, needs to realize what they're doing, because... Oh, they're too late, they're too late. This is it. This is yeah, GG. that should be done, unless... I mean, it was GG like... 30 seconds ago as well. I mean, <laughs> they simply need to sank on the core. Yeah. And sank, sank, sank before people die. This shield sank. Okay, okay sank is go. down, and now the core will finally fall in the second game. Elite Air will take it after all this hustle. Almost 28 <laughs> minute game, only 3 seconds until that mark hit. Uh, so, but... so, here is something, guys, you have to uh, math you might not know. Um, the core. Uh, as the minions and everything, the cores and the building scale until minute 20. At minute 20, it has 22,000 health and 11,000 shields. And it stops gaining health and shields. Whereas you, the heroes, the immortal, the objectives, and the minions, continue to gain health. So if you are going for the core call after minute 20, you are significantly stronger than the core. Uh, at minute 27, you have such a huge advantage in it, you really shouldn't be afraid. 15% is literally two or four auto attacks. It's not the same if you're doing it at 27 and at 13, for example. So yeah, very, very, uh, 
interesting matchup there, I would say. Um, I mean, uh, definitely a uh, uh, much, much um, better game, I would say, than the first one. first one was very one-sided for the side of uh, Plan B. This one was uh, quite back and forth. It was, uh, there were moments where both teams seemed like they were um, very comfortable winning, but managed to, um, the other team managed to take it. So, um, very good. Uh, Plan B will be taking first pick again. No, this time, uh, not again. Uh, for, they are taking the first pick. So, Elite AI map pick. Very, very good, very interesting game. No rap got on this team. There, um, there was rap got several times. I, I don't know what stream you're watching, Yozos, but there, there was some pretty nice jungle rapping. I mean, no, and no one can get rap as good as Calvin now. So. Yep. I, I mean, I try my best, but don't, don't expect me to be on that level. Um, yeah, we were still uh, waiting. Problem is, like... uh, interestingly enough, you know, with uh, the, the very uh, huge damage here, uh, only 30k compared to 70 that Grim and Living got. I mean, she was on the defense quite a lot, but I would still say. Even with Nature's Calling, she should definitely be much higher. I mean, she's behind Tyrael, behind... Was it hero damage uh, or siege damage? Yeah, hero, hero damage. Behind... I, I don't almost... remember in a lot of teamfights Lunara got Bersi done quite fast. Yeah, yeah. Like, yeah. a lot I of mean, it was could... burst fights, right? And Lunara isn't really made for that. She should be more about the poking. I mean, definitely has to play safe most deaths uh, on, on her team. I mean, uh, as I said, her damage is the same as a noobs, and that... That shouldn't happen behind Tyrael, behind almost everyone else. The only person behind him on damage are actually Malfir and Luther, and not even far behind. <laughs> still, uh, still waiting for Mapic. Mm -hmm. What's up with the other? Are there any audio issues? Um, not sure. I did receive some like. I, I did my, my audio does tend to kind of crack up from time to time and I haven't been able to locate where the issue comes from. Okay, so, we have D Shire. Okay, then Shire, let's make a lobby for that then. Um, let's make this. Okay. Ah. I already prepared it. <laughs> so, who picked this? Um... Uh, this was picked by uh, Plan B. Oh, no, sorry, by Elite AI. So, Plan B wanted their uh, their first pick for this map. Or for any map, I guess. <laughs> um, so, I Gentle is on the left side. Yes. Hylan also on the left side, next one on, on the left side, Frazen on the left side. Um, where is the O'Neill guy on the right? I'm gonna assume. Uh, Bo's on the right, and this is, this is the correct order. Hope we don't have some uh, foreign invaders in this lobby. Bergen. Where is Bergen? Oh, oh, crown on the um, In the meantime, let's go to the draft screen again for here. And let's go with our scores. And let's check if both teams are ready, and then we can start. So, uh... Aha. No, Vision wants to take a quick toilet break. We will have a small break. Uh, yeah, this series has been going for quite a while now. Um, it's <laughs> quite. Ah, <laughs> uh, yeah, with a 30 minute delay and of course some pauses in the games themselves as well. Things tend to. Yeah, but, but, stack up. but still, we, we might uh, be looking at uh, two and a half hour series. 
We could have easily cast it too serious by now. <laughs> what you gonna do, Fat? I mean, it's not like anyone is actually walking. Other than people farming. Mm -hmm. So, um, let's talk, uh, what do we expect to see um, from this game? Um, the signature, uh, I would say, heroes from the first game were, that were both good band last game, were Vala and uh, Sylvanas. Sylvanas isn't exactly strong on this map, uh, but, um, but Vala might, uh, not, Vala Hypercarry might not uh, be... Tuvala might come out, the KT might yeah. come out once again. Um, we, we can uh, see the Haka like on this map just because. Yeah, uh, sorry. Uh, yeah, I was about to say that that uh, compared to the previous two maps, this is actually a map where the soul lane is important. So uh, on both previous maps, uh, Plan B went with full double tank, uh, not really a soul lane, and didn't really get punished for it. Because the cell lanes aren't as important, you just need sort of to hold them. You don't actually have to, you know, win them per se. Whereas uh, on this map, you actually need to win the cell lane, uh, unless you are constantly getting kills and rotating all over the map. Essentially, it's much harder uh, if you don't win the cell lane. So we might expect to see an actual cell laner here, or uh, it's interesting to see if they will go to their uh signature again and go with the full double tanks and just go for the late game team fights which they definitely had in both of these both of these games because of that yep so let's look as we start the draft how both teams decide to take this last series out of best of three amazingly not the best of seven <laughs> I mean, again, two and a half hours for <laughs> best of three. Could have easily done the best of seven as well. I mean, luckily there were no casts uh, later on in this channel or they would no, only get cancelled or delayed, yeah. yeah. Um, but, yeah. Some, sometimes it happens. Uh... Yeah, I mean, can't, can't really do much about it. And... Uh, uh, it's it's worth mentioning though that both teams were um, were very sportsman like and accommodating to the other team because in both cases there were connection issues um, and uh, some minor crashes and internet hiccups so both teams uh, could have actually taken three wins at one point and it would still uh, be one one but we would have been done an hour earlier. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, yeah, uh, but like, like, um, very good of them that they both uh, decided. We have the Uther ban on one side. I don't expect uh, the Nova Hover to come through. Yeah. <laughs> that uh, I mean, the Uther Genji was definitely um, a combo they they couldn't deal with. But the Sanct uh, Meltel was also another combo they couldn't deal with. Um, it was essentially both of those indestructible. They just didn't have a response. Even the mouth silence didn't help much because one person was most of the time already dead. Um, and yeah, the, the Hakaban on the other side, uh, much more map oriented, definitely uh, makes sense here. The Haka is usually a um, hero for the solo, and you will pick that won't actually win the solo. Mm, somehow the Savannah's will... considered. <laughs> yeah, the, the interesting thing is talking how Savannah's isn't. Really, the strongest here on this map. One of the reasons why Sylvanas isn't the strongest here on this map is because you have to have someone in the dragon, right? And yeah. um, sure, that can be your solo laner, uh, but it's kind of hard to rotate your solo lane to take the dragon. So it's usually the other DPS who will be taking the dragon. So if you have uh, the Sylvanas take the dragon, then you will you will not get value of her, and then if you have the other DPS take the dragon, um, you will have trouble um, with um, with actually doing the deep, doing hero de damage uh, during that phase. Where I mean, obviously your tank and your support are out of the question to get into the dragon, mm -hmm. because then the rest of the team would just die. Yeah, I do. However, the Savannas must be heavy favorite from from Plan B if. Um... If it get 
gets picked twice and banned once against him. Yeah, yeah, definitely. I mean, it's obviously something they uh, they like to play and uh, vary. Elite, I feel felt like the the Haka still was a more imminent danger um, than the comfort pick on the Savannas and decided to ban that. So, I mean, I I would have to agree Seen. with that. Also, I I don't think. I personally, as I said, I definitely wasn't expecting the Sylvanas. Uh, Varian again, uh, this is possibly again the Soul Lane Varian Taunt, which means the other team can pick a Soul Lane that can punish Varian. Mm -hmm. um, I, I wouldn't push him in a Soul Lane necessarily. Um, I, I'm happy to see the Varian get picked against the Genji because it does very well. Um, the charge into Taunt can lock down the Genji for long enough to your, for your team to actually kill him. I mean, I would absolutely prefer to have the Varian as the actual tank and the real soul laner. I'm just uh, uh, extrapolating on the experience mm -hmm. we had with uh, with this team. If, if that's uh, gonna be the case, though, if Eliti just picks a regular soul laner, they they should just dominate this this game, um, like just snowball too much from from their early game. I mean, they don't um, necessarily have to snowball. Very, um, very uh, unless they go very with a very heavy uh, lane pusher. Um, the top lane, I mean, just holding the top lane doesn't necessarily guarantee you the snowball. The foreman also has to win. I mean, uh, it's very, very doesn't have any decent form of clear. You can push him in with like a lot of heroes. Yeah, yeah exactly. Like you that can get wall well very easily, and that that that's what allows you to to take some snowball like the the early. Yeah, the, that's what I meant. If they pick a soul laner that can also uh, push, uh, not only uh, like for example, if they go for the Chen, um, you know, Chen can do very decently and and push in the Varian. Uh, because yeah, Varian's rain clear is is pretty weak. Um, so hopefully they won't go for the for the something like Tassadar again. On the other hand, it's kind of hard to uh, to guess if uh, Plan B will be going for a real Solaner. But you can just wait with your Solaner last, since uh, Plan B will be forced to pick uh, their entire team before the last pick of Elite AI. So, uh, Katie as. Um, as the comfort pick, we we also saw last game, so that's again decent. And uh, <laughs> yeah, the 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 last game they realized they they got completely wrecked by the Saints and the Divine Shield, so they're saying. Although I would no say more. that Tyrell wouldn't be a good pick here on the side of Elite AI, since um, their their team is already pretty low on clear. Putting a Tyrell in that kind of gets gets very annoying because then. One, you, you don't have like a really good solo laner, or you don't have a really good clear hero in your draft, or you don't take a healer, that's also perfectly possible, but... I mean, Tyrell can do a decent solo and he wouldn't lose to... He would uh, lose to, to Varian, Varian, but it, it wouldn't get him the advantage. Yeah, but, but still, I would say late game, uh, the Sanctus would be a bit more useful than the... Than the very taunt, especially. I mean, Tyrell is very strong uh, against Tukov, Sylvanas. He, he, you know, gets on them, and uh, and and manages to to do a lot of damage if he's not the only tank. So with uh, with someone like an Uberak, he should. Uh, again, we have the double uh, the double reset comp. So I'm guessing we can expect uh, Malthal as the last pick and the Soul Lane, and Malthal would do good uh, against the Barry. So it's uh, it's definitely something we can expect, I would say. Yeah, especially since that Maltel isn't gonna get um, get removed by anything in his ult. Yeah. Uh -huh. uh, I mean, if unless Stitches comes into play, uh, but I mean, we saw how ineffective Ganja Liming alone were to poke down and kill people. But when you throw in the Maltel ult in the equation, even if they remove the Maltel, even if they kill him, he just needs to get. A uh, few seconds of his ult on people, and that's more than enough for the Genji and the Liming to clean up. Uh, even without the Divine Shield, if Genji plays a little less aggressively than the last game, with uh, with the Ancestral, uh, he should be able to survive quite well. Um, and we have our Tennis in the solo lane. This Tennis is not a... the best solo laner, kind of dependent on his swaps in most matchups, I would say. 
I, I actually think Artanis loses most soul lanes. Uh, he is one of those heroes that kind of hold a little, sort of, uh, but slightly lose essentially every soul lane. It's very hard I for mean, him to win. I mean, if you hit a swap here, you can win it. Race, I mean, like... if you hit a swap into tower, sure, but I mean, that's kind of hard to do on Dragon Share because the lane is actually. I'm not saying it's huge. likely to happen, I'm just saying that's basically. No, no, I mean, it, it can happen on, um, for example, on BAE, it's common to pick a tennis, so there he can swap in because the lane is actually very short, but on, on Dragon Share, it's just too huge to. You know, get the swap and get into someone into towers unless he is playing very, very carelessly. Mm -hmm. um, but, I mean... again. One thing I did see this week, I think it was a Monday. Yeah, it was a Monday. Uh, we saw Trust Issues uh, Division 2 team actually run the Artanis in the four man and uh, sent their tank to the top lane. Which again, the variant on top lane is a stupid ID. Um, but. I don't think, honestly, Varian loses to Malthel more than Artanis. I, I, I think they they are essentially the same against Malthel. Because neither of them can trade with Malthel. Um, and neither of them can kill Malthel. And neither of them have Vaidkir. So I, I think actually it would be the same. And putting Varian in the foreman is going to result in completely negating all early game Sylvanas potential. So I would actually totally here put myself Varian in the in the solo and Artanis in the format because um, uh, it, it definitely gives you much more potential mm -hmm. for the format and you're going to be losing the solo in anyways and you're not going to be losing it much harder. So. Yeah. So, last game of this series. Sorry that it took so long to get in, but of course with all the delays and stuff, we got kind of held up. But yeah, last game of the series, both teams are fighting it out for the best of three. We have Elite on the left hand side, trying to win it with this comp. We have Maxi Monster on the Inubarak, Gentle Swallowed on Malthel, Heilong on Li Ming, Vision on Genji and Bergen on the Rhaegar. And once more, Plan B will fight them with Terror on their tennis, Chauncey on Varian, Mr. Nice Guy on Sylvanas, Ian O'Neill on Stukov, and Dorzoi, Dorzoi, sorry, on Tychus. Lian seems to be chilling a bit in the base first. <laughs> uh, yeah, we still didn't have the confirmation on exactly how uh, his oh. name is pronounced, okay. so if I made a mistake, I apologize. Lian is going very ballsy here, in my opinion. How how Elite I didn't engage on him immediately. Was, oh, they, they did send the mouth out the top, so they didn't want to take 5v4. Which is which is kind of understandable. And with this, Maltel might get some yeah. slight XP advantage from this early fight. Uh, well, there's a 2 minute advantage there. Uh, tennis goes to the solo lane, and now we have uh, something very interesting in the format. We have Varian, who is completely weak early game, and Sylvanas, who you literally pick to gain early game advantage, right? Mm -hmm. So they kind of negate each other. Um, yeah. I mean, they negate the, the positive sides, and you don't really get um, any value of, of, of either. Because you can't really push that hard into him unless the other team makes a uh, huge misplace. Mm -hmm. So with the Maltel versus the Tennis on top lane, um, Plan B is gonna have to take control of this bot point for most of the game or be stuck denying mid for a big part of it as well. Looks like so far they are okay taking this on bot. And actually yeah, Tennis gets top for us. For a little while there. Got swapped into the towers there. The Genji is of course there to deny at least a little. Oh, bot actually is the one to take it back from them. So now we have the camp spawning as well. Artanis versus Malthel. Let's take a little look into how this trade goes. But then swap to bot as Tychus is very deep here. Gets taken down by a Liming or uh, Got kind of deep. Didn't have any tank with him, so... Um... Yeah, the, the Varian decides to, to stay mad. Um, they're kind of forfeiting the rotation there. Um, 
I, I don't think that's the best option with uh, with the Silvano Sandy not on top. Maltel actually unable to regain. Um, I mean, he can regain it at any point. He just chooses not to, I guess. Oh, that's a beautiful swap on top. He gets swapped into towers. Forget everything I said. Half health gone. He's still losing the lane, but if he manages to do that again... Um, it is kind of weird that they chose to... to like, why, why don't they have like the Sylvanas be mid? Like, I'm pretty sure Genji is one of the like heroes that has no chance at contesting Sylvanas' wave here. Or like, pushing. Um, still, they got some I mean, push on top as yeah, well. What they're well. doing now is actually good. Uh, Sylvanas, you want to be as possible, even if it's... Uh, the Genji is rotating in now, though. It's still Stukov a force is back to Varian. Position. And Stukov gets engaged upon, gets very low, gets chased, and will the die to is Radar. There. Is the follow up there? No, it doesn't look like it. I was a bit of a misplay by the Varian retreating um, before his team actually um, was able to do so. So um, he kind of le left his backline too exposed. He should, he should be zoning. Um, like he doesn't have any form of VLCC yet. Uh, yet. But still, body blocking can do a lot by its own. Yeah, I mean, he is... Uh, uh, even though he doesn't have his uh, maximum health and uh, and the taunt yet, uh, he's still pretty durable compared to the other heroes. I mean, he still has more health. Once you uh, get and the protect he's... on 4. Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah, and, and, and the protect um, definitely makes you more durable than any of the other heroes on the on the field other than Tannis, obviously. So you definitely want to try and protect heroes like Stukov and Daikus. Ming and Rhaegar got to push in bot a little bit. Ming stays a little too long and gets punished by the Tychus and the Varian will have to tap because of it. Both teams hitting their level 7 talents now and let's take a quick peek at how that was. Uh, at how that's going. Uh, things seem to be fairly regular. As far as I can see. Yeah, and it's going to... The Anubia slow here on bot, we'll have to... Follow through on their tennis though, instead of the uh, much more common slow and swap, for instance, is is kind of interesting, because you usually pick the tennis for the... Um, oh, it's actually... We have amateur opponents, and follow through. This is the build you go for in BOE, oh. to do maximum uh, yeah. damage to the immortal, but it, it doesn't actually work on... The dragon I mean, doesn't... The dragon is considered a vehicle, so technically yeah. stuff that work on heroes work on him, not non-heroic damage, mm -hmm. right? Uh, so, yeah. so um, this is actually. I, I wonder if this is to help him with Wait. wave clear, mm, I don't know. or I can, I does, can he, see does he know this doesn't work on the uh, on the dragon? I can see the follow through with like you don't have the best damage yourself, so like. Add a little bit of burst with that, maybe? Um, I mean, the the follow-through uh, would definitely uh, work if you went, uh, for example, Season Arcs when... Like, I mean, here's the thing. Yeah, sure, it increases your damage. But if you're picking... If you wanted a damage boozer, you, sh you had better option. You picked Artanis for the swap. And then that's why you need the slow after the swap, so the person actually stays in place. You don't have any form of CC, you don't have a mouth, you don't have anything. You, you really need that yeah, slow to get value of the swap. <laughs> like, if he has the swap when he swaps into towers, that's a, that's a kill. And then follow through kind of enhances one of your weaker abilities. And again, if you wanted that, then you should have picked a different hero. Mm -hmm. Level 9, feet 10, very shortly. Here Stukov gets greedy and gets punished because of it. Level 10 now hitting the cocoon. If he gets it picked up on time, he could. Does look like it. If if he was very quick on the cocoon pickup, he could have just cocooned the tigers or the varian and said, "I'm saving this for like later and just wait till your till your stuns are back up and kill him the moment he comes out." Um, top is actually quite interesting in how this lane is progressing so far. It looks yeah, like yeah, I mean, the tennis is actually actually killing Malthol here. Yeah, and, but the Genji uh, pops up. Genji comes in. Malta should back off and let his Genji do his work. Yeah, pretty that, sure that's the Artanis needs to auto attack here if he wants to live. He needed that shield cooldown to come he, back he out. Ca he kind of tried that, I think, uh, but too little, too late. No. He can't really escape from Artanis. And that's Dragon for the blue team. 
that's Anubarak in the dragon, right? Yeah, Anubarak yeah. was able to pick it up just before the minions hit him. Very calculated play there. <laughs> now we see Blind coming out on the side of the Artenis. I'm not sure. With this high mobility, Purifier Beam isn't gonna do too much anyway. I don't think there's like a best, like a good choice. On oh, the that's, that, that's 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 uh, Tychus dropping his ult, yeah. uh, chasing the dragon. The dragon looks like a s very small creature compared mm -hmm. to the Odin. The majestic um, Odin. The, the dragon in full retreat here. Uh, he's gonna try and get some damage on the towers. Terror, meanwhile, clearing waves, gets kicked all the way to the camp. That's quite unfortunate. Uh, the dragon deciding to oh, not This is going to turn into 5v4 if they see the, the Artenis is top, they can engage right now. Maltel popping his oh, gold Genji, also and commanding the Tychus is getting low. The Sylvanas also falling. People keep dying, but nothing further will happen here. They will at least get a wall out of this. Also, level 13 is going to come very mm -hmm. soon. Maltel now. Yeah, they, they, they will get the wall and the very important deaths before level 13 that will oh. grant them the, the, the pure 13. Um, I would say, uh, team, that team was kind of disorganized there, Artemis went top soak and they were completely out of position, I mean, they got engaged with Martel with his ult on five of them, that, that got a lot of value and allowed Liming and Genji just clean up. Mm -hmm. Now, this is a 4v4, they do have level 13 advantage, Elita is going to take this camp, not afraid. All the enemy team, of course that Varian is looking for a taunt here, decides not to get it, the cocoon was used maybe pretty prematurely, I don't think they should have been too afraid, um, with the Rhaegar still there. Like, I mean, Artanis wasn't there in the so four versus four uh, on different talent peers, so I don't think they should have been afraid, even after that cocoon landed, they could have just went for it. Um, I mean, even, even Varian... Uh, can't really escape much. They could have at least gotten some damage on them and possibly forced other teammates into panicky uh, mm -hmm. position. Or tennis clearing the camp quite easily <laughs> with the amateur opponents and uh, follow through. Yeah, yeah. So that's that's something. Yeah, I mean that, that taking taking those two talents for that one camp is definitely worth now it. Now we see a rotation from Plan B going to that Maltel. Can he spot it down in time? He's late. He gets punished. He should fall here. I don't think he can live. Actually, he pops his ult, which might be a bis big misplay on his part. He does get the quest as he <laughs> did. I mean, he 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 has 30 seconds death timer, and his ult has 100 seconds. That's most definitely a huge misplay. You're not gonna have it now in very important moments. Even uh, there, there's gonna be a team fight for the boss, uh, and if they take the dragon for uh, on the dragon, you really need it. There, there's no reason to. Yeah, for a lot uh, of people, that's a very uh, reflex, uh, reflexive uh, mm -hmm. thing. I, I call that the skunk reflex. When you're engaged upon, you just spray all over the place with whatever ults and buttons you have, and then... But like, yeah, but like stitches, it, right? <laughs> <laughs> exactly. No, but uh, seriously, oh. I mean, I, I say it often, but it's really something that needs to... Like, people need to learn how to control. It's okay if it like happens a few times, but, but you need to realize how much you're wasting. Like, Malfo is back now, That's and uh, another 40 seconds, he doesn't have his ult. If, if a huge that was been... happens, it's... If that would have been a real team fight, I would have been okay with it. If if you're alone, you know your team is on bot, and still you're in in a one v five trying to pop your ult. That's definitely something you should learn to control. Rhaegar now gets killed by a swap here, and this will allow Plan B to take a bit of control of the situation here. The deaths are kind of staggered right now. Varian looking for a taunt. If you can get Genji, this is over for him. Cleanse is swap well, is there I as well. Think. Can he? Oh, oh he did that. Away. Will fall. The Savannah's now using her trade to get some fort value. The Maltel is still on top, trying to soak 16 for his team, I would say. Yeah, but Maltel isn't the great, greatest pusher. He's slowly building up that way and uh, might get uh, some damage, but on the other hand, Sylvanas can take a free fort with the Odin if, if he Sylvanas keeps... actually with a very early silence there. The Liming now greeting for the kill on that Artanis. Oh, that's Liming. Dead Mothel does come back, so... 
Yeah, but, but that's what I think. This is not what they want. They have Sylvanas on that keep now. I know they should yeah, be done very soon. Yeah, but is kind of afraid of that keep. He, she's not actually Don't saving it. The Mouth will go. The Mouth ult this time gets again a lot of value, actually. The depoting arm is gonna push him away, but Vision has left game sadly enough, and uh, Tennis will fall. Mm, Vision was uh, Genji the game, I would say, at a very bad time. Um, we had four, five versus four for plan B, for uh, five versus three even, for quite a while on the keep with the Sylvanas, and they managed to lose that. What happened was that Sylvanas wasn't actually disabling uh, both keep and the tower. She wasn't disabling any of them, so minions dropped that, and then uh, Hero started taking even some um, some damage from, um, from the forts, uh, which weren't being disabled, and then... Um, um, then Melthal actually managed to get a lot of value, um, and and their tennis was just left behind with with no health. <laughs> mm -hmm. The the Malthal once again didn't get gained a lot of value. Um, that's something they kind of need to pay more attention to how they position with that. I think also uh, Silvanas uh, needs to pay more attention to. Uh, actually uh, disabling I'm having trouble typing this uh, actually disabling uh, again the forts when they're sieging like that I mean she doesn't do a lot of damage uh, she needs to focus her both shadow dagger I mean with the uh, lost soul cooldown shadow dagger you actually don't want to throw it on a hero uh, you want it to spread to a hero from somewhere else so ideally, you want to throw it on a minion or okay, in just this case. Here, why are they not interrupting this dragon? Oh I thought it was a big They knew That's not only... They knew at least someone was bot. They could have, like at worst, they had a fair fight because the Liming was coming in as well. There was kind yeah, they, of they, dragon they were kind of afraid with the Artanis being dead. They wanted again. They played it safe, mm -hmm. um, but they did see people on bot. And they definitely should have at least tried to stop, if not go for the kill. Uh, luckily for them, this dragon shouldn't get a lot of value. It's already pretty it's being used low. already here, but it's on the very end. The silence was done already, maybe a bit early in the fight, but this noob gets very low now. His team has to retreat because he can't really zone anymore. Uh, I don't know why Plan B is more, not more aggressive on this chasing. I think like they didn't. They should know the the Maltel, like at that point didn't have his ult back. Don't very clean here. See some nice damage. Rhaegar has to use his ult as well. Odin is being popped right here. A new barrack falls. <laughs> Maltel in the backline only hits one person. <laughs> the Genji with his ult though. The porting arm on the Maltel will negate his ult completely. Now Odin is trying to live through this. Will fall to the Liming though. Liming is very deep. Maltel falling here as well. 3 for 1 so far. Liming is chased down by the, uh, by the variant. Doesn't have his taunt completely ready at 5 seconds. But uh, nice they have the Sylvanas. They should be going for the keep, not for it. A uh, highlight of that fight for me was Rhaegar standing around the camp, not capping it, just standing nearby, not actually doing anything, and then waiting for their tennis to move in. Artanis went in and took the camp that could have been kept mm -hmm. easily, and now that camp is actually going to kill the bottom keep. Yeah, they might actually be a bit greedy going for two keeps here if uh, Elite AI manages to defend against both, because of course that time is not the highest. Yeah, they, they should have went for the bot one, uh, bot the winning keep anyway, and they should have with Instead the Sylvanas. Instead going for the camp, and this is a risky play. This is going to be a 5v5 right now, and the attack is actually backed. Uh, well, died and so has to get back to the fight. Yeah, but they have a uh, they have a tennis with the amateur opponents followed through and triple strike now, so he clears that camp pretty fast. He cleared it fast, but still was a very risky position. To yeah, it now. was it was insanely risky. Again, we saw them trying to play safe. They you, the bottom keep is the one you want to kill. On uh, this map, we talked about that uh, a few times because that's usually the winning lane. Um, Oh, if if some people actually didn't know, the reason why mid isn't a great option as well is because mid catapults on this map um, uh, actually tend to get killed easily by you know the things from the side. So like bot bot catapults are what you definitely want to win the game here, mm -hmm. um, and uh, they could have easily 100% with the wave 
with the double camp with the Sylvanas five versus three gotten that keep easily and instead they chose to get the mid wall which doesn't really do anything both teams looking here as a five man plan B getting the bot camp Elite AI moving in clearing the bot camp actually not looking for a fight right now Plan B should be more aggressive to defend this camp because uh, getting a fight on a camp is actually pretty good. So one they go for the mercenary queen, but still it's it's quite a lot of damage. People tend to ignore that. Mm -hmm. But yeah, it looks like things will get cleared up. Um, this will give Elite AI a chance to get the DK fully charged, at least for a moment. And if Plan B isn't careful and leaves someone behind there, they might actually get... The DK. Oh, will be staying behind. The thing but is, Sylvanas can get do. this. If Tychus looks like they won't be able to find Tychus, if he manages to. I, I, I kind of disappointed in Elite. I, they should have rotated at least some people up earlier to to one scout the area. Like the Genji can just throw some shurikens into the bushes and scout if the enemy is there. If they're not there, just great. You, you think? Yeah, I, I absolutely agree. Also, they should have recognized that there oh, was a split here. and that fort gives them 20. Anubis isn't there yet. Swap happens. Silence very early swap on. Swap does not go off. Uh, yeah. yeah, I think it was looking for the swap. I, I think it was on cooldown or something, but or he missed. Uh, but there is a camp uh, pushing in the bot keep now. Yeah. So they're same going to go defend. Same yeah, for same for top. Keep. Uh, the thing is that that top four, top four they got and the push they got from that will most likely give them 20 and a very important 20 Which they should be able to use to get the dragon and potentially They don't want to fight here at all though, they're pushing way too far front in my opinion And should have should have cocooned there Yeah so I mean, they still. had a very limited window with 20 and now they're gonna get to get gauged upon on 20 Cleanse Oh, that's Tyke a very nice just standing right there. in there, the Genji is just slashing all the way. Will the Stuko fall? Stuko gonna fall here as well. They should give at least keep if they get one more kill. I might even call it for the core. Of course they are quite low. And Varian is not giving up so easily. Manages to protect himself to safety. The swap oh, very risky Oh, that's here. a ten is alone. But he does manage to get a lot of damage on now. Manages to get out and this keep is staying alive against all odds. Like... Keep, keep is alive, but there are five people. They are low, but Rhaegar will manage to fill that up. Um, Rhaegar definitely won that fight and possibly the game for their team there. He manages to get the cleanse. He manages to get uh, the Ancestral. But just as Malfell was about to drop, Malfell turns around, gets on Tychus. Tychus dies with his ult. He could have popped in that ult at uh, any time to negate at least some of the damage. Yes, Malfell trait goes through the armor, but his auto attacks don't. And the rest of the damage being done from other spells don't. So the Odin probably could have saved him. Now Malfoy is going to get in the dragon. Yeah. And this is 20 minute dragon. There actually seemed the to be is... a slight communication on the side of plan B. Because the Varian was rotating to interrupt the dragon. But then kind of decided midway. No, I'm, I need to be bot to kill the Anubarak on time. But um, seemed to very confused from their side. Uh, this should be a keep that, not a fort. Uh, that fort is useless and doesn't do anything. And no. I understand Elite I thinks with four people they can't really do much, mm -hmm. but they should definitely be trying for Don't the keep. is doing a lot though, and the big red button Odin does a lot of damage. The Dragonite is even scared of it. <laughs> Swap happens. How this is the Dragonite running away, I don't know. Usually you take him for the siege. If you're not doing anything, then at least. Run away, I guess. I um, mean... This is kind of confusing. Still 12 seconds until the Anubis is back. They shouldn't be trying to poke as much as they're doing right now. I mean, of course, Rotten did go down, so that's great for them. Anubis here. They are kind of weirdly positioned here. They are stuck in Ooh, the Oh, so gets interrupted from the wave. Stones, no one there to follow up. And Oop engaging now as well. Very new is level 16 talent. The silence is uh, people, uh, but Anoop nothing too much to is coming out of it. Anyone in the cocoon now. Come on, anyone in the cocoon. Blind happens, cocoon exactly. happens on nice. the Varian. Now the ult of the Maltel is going. Varian Kenji gets ulted on time. The Stukov dies here. The Artanis low tries yeah, to get his shield low. value. 
Genji Varian kills some blocked. backline. Varian is gonna die here as well. This should be the end of the game. But yep. of course, yep. we've seen. Go, bo go bot and core. Go bot and core. Yeah, they're, they're doing that. Um, that definitely, of... Plan B was caught without a Deralt in a very bad position. When they. Um, when they go out to Dragonite low, they wanted to go top, and they did nothing top. They should have just went back um, and escape, and they might have actually done... Uh, but Genji actually decides to go back to defend their keep, so that means they're not going they're golden. They're not planning on because, finishing this? I mean... Man. Maybe they're thinking of playing it safe. Ah, uh, shit. It's... This is free game. 20 seconds, 5 against 1. You can't, you can't go back, guys. No... This is like they one. Have... This is like one of the most crucial mistakes I do think we see in kind of the um, lower end divisions, like three, like division three through five. Tiny can tend to make this mistake way more than like the division one and two do. Um, but it's like, well, the enemy is all done. But like, if we lose on core, they might kill us. They might kill our core. So like. We just don't go that's, that's absolutely true. If they wiped on the core, they would have lost that game. However, you're not gonna wipe on the core. <laughs> five that's, against that's one. Yeah, Sylvanas alone, there is no way in how Sylvanas can kill any of them with regular healing. Here, Elite AI. And I, it's in a 22. Here, Elite so AI sees the Sylvanas is still split, split from the rest of the party. Why they're not moving in for the kills right now? They are kind of doing it, but they, Genji's they like behind the Sylph is already. Oh, the Sylph actually going back to both. Okay, yeah, this still should actually be making a huge final mistake. Final fight, the porting arm goes out. Now, our the Artanis gets slow, our Artanis dies, Malthal is on the cool. chase, Sylvanas is top. Sylvanas is, is, she is going top. Is trying to get top. DK? This is a huge mistake in my mistake. Uh, in my opinion. I mean, this is... Yeah, they're going for the core and she's getting the DK. Okay, so finally, point. after some delay, we do have the core plays being made. The Rhaegar is actually tanking this. The one target yeah, that doesn't he, want to do this at this point. Look at this, this is 5 against th uh, 2, 3, with the Odin in defense, and they're going for the core now, and they didn't go for the 5 against 1. Mm -hmm. But we see here now the power of scaling, because it's minute 24, they actually managed to win the core even with 3 people defending. Yeah. And finally, ladies and gentlemen, after... Two and what a half? Ah, uh, pretty close to two and a half hours. Two, two, two hours and, and twenty minutes. Uh, no, two hours and twenty-two minutes. It's finally this series comes to a close. Uh, yeah, Elite AI taking the win in the end. Um, very, very long matchup. A lot of it. We we did see some long games. We also did see some pauses, of course. Yeah, but uh, the games themselves were very back and forth. Uh, very interesting to to watch. Uh, definitely, um, after that first one, where Plan B won without losing a single member, um, yeah, very very interesting that uh, Elite AI manages to to do the reverse sweep and actually win. Yeah. Um... Uh, we can maybe go for like a very, very short Windows interview. <laughs> I, I just wrote that. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, Elite AI still proving to be undefeated in the 5. Now they are taking the very top. Um, the only team still undefeated, it looks like, in the Div. So. Good job on them. Oh, uh, absolutely. Uh, very Let's take a quick very look. good job. I mean, managing to, again, uh, do the reverse sweep uh, after after losing uh, the first game without any kills is, is pretty impressive. Yeah, it looks like the next matchup is going to be puppies and shark tanks. So it's going to be soon as well, where the puppies are going to try and dethrone them. Hmm. Should be an interesting match. The 5 seems to actually be pretty competitive right now, as far as like all the teams go. 
um, yeah, the, yeah, there are definitely some. Uh, uh, like, oh, sorry. Was was it like last season when? Um, last season when way more than uh, like the last two seasons had like way more imbalance in their things. So, like there was a clear winner of that diff, right? Um, yeah, last season we did have one team clearly standing above all, but we, there were also other teams that uh, that did pretty well um, in that division. I do think this season it's much more competitive. I, I do think a lot of it has to do with how the divisions work. Like we have the puppies in the Shark Tanks, for example. Let's take them as an example. I mean, they uh, changed their roster quite a lot. Um, and a lot of them improved, but because they managed to keep it under three new people, um, they are still, um, you know, Division Five, even though their MMR is kind of, uh, mm -hmm. kind of above that. So, uh, yeah, and uh, we have Vision joining us. So, yeah. yeah. Hello, welcome. Hello. Congratulations Hello. on your win. Thank you. Thank you very much. It was quite a long match, uh, two hours and 20 minutes. Uh, uh, yeah, uh, a lot of delays, unfortunately. Yeah. Uh, I apologize about that, sorry. I mean, it, it happens. It's not, not something that can be done. But uh, yeah, congratulations for me too. Um, very, very, very good series. Very exciting to watch and cast. Yeah, there are a few uh, uh, Clown Fiesta plays, but uh, I mean, I mean, there are a lot. From our side, but yeah. uh, we, we've played you quite uh, quite extensively. Um, yeah, I, I if you want to rewatch the replay, I, I'm sure you'll <laughs> you'll uh, find uh, the yeah. in the point. Yeah, I would flame me. So, uh, so, I mean, after the clown fiesta plays, instead of having like a tilted outlook, I guess I was just looking positively. And like, the first game was a bit weird because. Uh, uh, we don't really encounter Sylvanas on Tomb, but then, I mean, I know it's strong, but we never really see any other teams do it, and it's really strong. And we just on the other it. hand, you probably uh, encounter Sylvanas on Dushire even less. Yeah, oh, oh yeah, that, that really <laughs> worries me. I was like, okay, I'm not going to ban it here, but that's because they won't pick it, right? And then that really surprised me when they picked it. That, that was my reasoning as well. We were like, okay, the ban Sylvanas obviously because that's expected, but like, yeah. there's no reason to ban her here. And then, yeah, exactly. bam, Sylvanas first pick. Yeah, that, that was what I was thinking when I was picking maps, because I was about to pick um, Tales of Doom, but then that's one of the other maps Sylvanas can find value in pretty easily. So, we just, because the way we were winning BOE was, I think we were just, we are waiting to 10, and we can team fight pretty well with these ults, with Genji and Malthale, that's really what we just do. So, we were looking to not get behind too far in macro and just play our game with the team fights. So that's why we took Dragonshire, because you can't really get way too out macro if you're not uh, not paying attention. So, I mean, it sort of worked. I mean, I guess it worked with one. But... I mean, on, B on BA, most definitely, I mean, you got value of those. I mean, uh, the, the Dragon Blade... Um, D shield wreck them, and at the same time, um, uh, the mouth fell out and uh, the sanct wreck them as well. I mean, you can even see that they, they understood how much it wrecked them with the, with the bands in the in the third game. Yeah, both both Tiro and Uto getting getting banned, but yeah, definitely a good yeah. job. Uh, so tell us, um, we won't take too long of your time, but like, um, you decided to go for the court call when it was five against three. You Technically, didn't know Sylvanas was was running that late, uh, but why did you decide not to go for the core call uh, when it was earlier? You had the keep down, and you had twenty seconds. Four of them were dead. Only Sylvanas was defending, and there were five of you. And then Genji decided to go back, and you guys all decide to go back. Ah, uh, okay. Uh, I guess this is where uh, we go to like. Div 5, because uh, I actually didn't notice anything you just said at that <laughs> point, so that would explain that. Uh, I backed, I was like, okay, well, I, was, I was tunnel visioning both keeps, so I was like, okay, our keep might die, so I'm just going to go back and save it, not realizing we could have just gone core. So. Yeah, uh, so we were just talking about that, I mean, it will probably be replay 
how sometimes teams with less experience will try to you know play it safe, quote unquote, and that it actually leads yeah. to only giving the other team a chance to try. But essentially, ask your minute twenty. If one person is defending and you have five people alive, and you don't, they don't have a key, if you seconds you have more than enough time. If that person is winning, there is a very very small chance that she can actually defend if she's godlike and you all stack up nicely, but even Liming yeah. most of the time will not be able to defend. Silvanas shouldn't yeah, be able to defend in 1% of the cases. Yeah. Well, if I had noticed it, I definitely would have gone for it, <laughs> but I was tunnel visioning the keep. And it was I mean, the same, like, on, I think it was, was it BOE? Yeah, it was definitely BOE, because we didn't even get close to the core in the first game. Uh, where... We could have gone got core in that game as well. I was telling Uther to kill himself. Uh, yeah, yeah, exactly. To the, get the core, but everyone else was. I mean, the, the comms were pretty cluttered at that point, and I was <laughs> really scared because we wouldn't get it, so everyone just ran away. So I was, I was, I was screaming for Uther to die, but uh, it didn't happen. But luckily, we still got another chance to get the core. Mhm. Mm nice. Um. So with this series. Um, you guys are still undefeated in your division, um, yeah. so obviously looking for the playoffs or at least uh, the cup at this point. Uh, I'm assuming. Yeah. What are yeah, you What are you expecting uh, this at the start of the uh, the season? Uh, yeah, for sure. And, uh, that's, <laughs> that's a confidence. I, mean, I like confidence. Uh, usually in my women, but I, I mean, I, I <laughs> confidence, but I think. I've earned confidence in a sense. I mean, we had a lot of confidence coming into the season and we haven't lost yet. So I don't really have much reason to lose it. Like mm -hmm. we won playoffs and then we were like one of the top teams. Well, we were like top seven last division, but that was our first, uh, our first time as a team. And we were a free agent team. We were like, okay, uh, we got this far from losing like the first game terribly and then we started to scrum against good teams and we were like, okay, we got this far, next season we can try and win it and we're so far doing what we wanted, so yeah. I guess it's okay. Are there any teams that stand out in the, the rest of the division for you guys? Any teams you're afraid of maybe? The, my biggest fear was this team uh, and then... The other, I'm not quite sure. There are quite a few that are like the same to me, but either way, we're we're ready. So yeah, you uh, you were able to defeat uh, your uh, your most feared opponent. So yeah, that's quite an accomplishment, we, I would say. We lost the first game really convincingly, but as long as we stay positive and win, uh, I mean, try our hardest in the next game. Wow, this is getting really weird uh <laughs> we can we can win the series as a whole i mean, I mean our trend is usually to lose the first game and then lo uh, win the rest like we've never won lost the first game then won the second game and not won the next game after that so always going for the being one game down always going for the reverse sweeps yeah they're the, <laughs> they're the coolest way to win at least <laughs> seems good um so yeah I don't know if Shadow has any questions left. Uh, no more questions for me. Okay, then uh, I'm going to give you some time to do some shout outs. Uh, I guess just a shout out to the rest of the team and Maxi for subbing uh, and the enemy team for a good game. Okay. And for you for casting and having to wait for us to get everyone in the game and all the delays. So, ah, yeah. No problem. Was was still a very fun series to watch. Um, so then we will be going back to casters. Um, so, yeah, good luck with the rest of your series, um, or with the rest of your season. Um, yeah. Hope to see you guys in the Cup, in the playoffs, so yeah. Okay, thank you. Yeah. Good luck see next you. season, well, the, the rest of the season, I mean. <laughs> yeah, of course, thank you. Bye-bye. Right. Okay, and with that, we are done after two and a half hours. Uh, thanks. <laughs> Got delayed by a fair bit, um, but I do hope you guys had fun watching the stream. Um, that we were able to at least be slightly entertaining during those pauses. Um, and yeah, I think we will be all then. See you guys later.
Bye-bye.